Obviously, you're known with Point Pusher on social media. Yeah, I was born with a paintbrush and it was easy. And that's it. I was working at Blue Sky at the time. I was there for 11 years. Everything you said, I was like, yes, yes, yes. I used to think, and I, and I still work with people who are like this now that are my age. People that should be old enough to know better now. Being right and being correct are not the same. And, and actually one of the things that helped me a lot was like reading books about self-discovery, discipline. Jokingly, like I turned to him and I, I hit him in the ribs and I was like, your mama. And we all laughed and joked about it, but I'll never forget, I looked at him and it was not funny to him. And then when I teach people, I'm like, this is my way, you need to discover your own way. You nailed it, it's insecurity more than anything else. People always told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Here in America, especially, everybody walks around thinking that other people who have an opposite view of you is dumb. My mother and father were not around. Uh, they both uh, were on drugs. Me too, but you know, they missed out. I, I turned out okay. All right. Thank you so much for joining Point Pusher. <laughs> hey, thank you for having me. Thanks a lot, man. How's it going? Going well, dude. Doing Good. well. Yeah. Yeah. How's life? This is the first time we're chatting, so I'm really excited to talk yes. to you, to be honest. <laughs> same, same. And, and thank you to Mihai for hooking us up. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, things are good, you know, uh, working from home like most of, of everybody working right now, you know, hoping yeah. that uh, one day that's not the only option, but we'll, <laughs> we'll see, you know, we'll see how it happens. Oh, you're in New York, right? Yeah, uh, but not like, not like New York, New York. I'm mm -hmm. actually upstate, so it's a few hours north of where it got really, really bad. Oh, wow. It's um, even worse. Yeah, so well, so here it's like um, it hasn't gotten bad yet. Mm -hmm. Thank goodness. Uh, it's been very low. Um, it's, uh, yeah, it hasn't been tremendously dangerous where we are. So oh, cool. hopefully, hopefully it stays that way, you know, but you never know. Well, I you mean, know? people need to put their masks on <laughs> if they do. For <laughs> sure. For sure. Yeah, absolutely. I, um, you know, you see the videos of people that refuse. Yeah, it's kind of uh, weird. It's, it's beyond weird. Like I, the thing is, right? Like I wouldn't want to deal with that person. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like you're dealing with them and they might be breathing something onto you. So it's like, how do you even like, what's the right way to approach it? I don't even know. You know, thankfully yeah. every place I've been, I've seen people wearing masks and staying away from each other, That's being good. respectful. So yeah, I haven't, I haven't hit anybody like that yet you know that's great but in washington actually they're really taking care of it I mean, i'm kind of like I, I don't i don't go out much like even before this pandemic i was working from home yeah but, but every time we go out sometimes we go out for shopping and stuff like groceries and things like that uh, i never saw anyone without a mask which is very surprising yeah like, watching the news and all that you know people are like going crazy about the mask <laughs> yeah i mean it's like everything else with the news right they amplify yeah. the small things to make them look even bigger sometimes so yes. i think that's that's you know a, a very vocal sort of uh minority of people yeah. you know so yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah so let me ask you this actually i started like point saying point pusher obviously you're known known with point pusher on social media do you want to like introduce your name and we go from there and then start talking about your history and the, your story of life what made you to be an artist and you know we take yeah. it from there yeah, I was born with a paintbrush and it was easy and that's it. No. Um, so uh, it's funny because I listened to the, the talk with you and Mihai mm -hmm. and I'm a couple of years older than Mihai. And wow. then hearing, hearing him say that he was old, I was like, oh man, I'm super old. <laughs> but, um, but the thing is, uh, for the same, I could relate to you guys' story because with him, he was saying he started before... Um, before uh, ZBrush and all that stuff. So the name Point Pusher, I Googled my name when I decided I was going to have an online presence. Mm -hmm. And uh, there was already uh, like a politician that had my name. And, oh, Danny you know, Williams? Yeah, same it's exact a same name. Common. Right now, there's actually an artist right now, wow. Daniel Williams, <laughs> same name as me, but he's amazing. Oh, yeah, you that's should look cool. up Dan Daniel Williams, he's a sculptor. Oh, and I, I, think, I think now he's getting into ZBrush too. So 
Yeah, wow. sadly, I'm not even the best sculptor with my name. Well, maybe there's <laughs> a magic name. with your name. Like, if maybe someone whoever has the name becomes the best artist. <laughs> well, there, that's the thing. It's like there was there was a guy years ago who was another artist that was like sort of really hobbyist or whatever. Like you could tell he wasn't working from a studio or whatever. Mm. And I was like, oh, that's cute, you know, whatever. And then yeah. I saw this guy and I was looking at his sculpture and I was like, oh man. <laughs> I gotta change my name. <laughs> no, he's he's really, 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 really. Phenomenal. That's amazing. I'm gonna yeah. check that name. Maybe you can share yeah. that at some point during this podcast. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, for sure. I'll find it. Yeah, um, yeah, but but the name came from exactly how Miha was describing it. That it's you know, before you were plotting out points, and it was just point pusher. But I yes. saw there were other people with the name, and a politician, and I think a boxer had the same name at the same time, and everything. Mm -hmm. So I was like. Yeah, no one's ever going to find me if I do that. The whole point is to be found. So I, uh, where I worked, I was working at Blue Sky at the time, and uh, which we year? used. To, uh, huh? Which year? Oh, uh, from I was there for for eleven years. So wow. I was there from ninety seven to uh, two thousand eight. Wow, ninety seven, yeah. man. Yeah, okay. it was my that was my first job. That's yeah, amazing. Yeah. I got super lucky. It was my first real job. <laughs> That's amazing. And. Uh, um, so yeah, uh, just we used to refer to ourselves in the modeling department as point pushers. Mm -hmm. So I just I just looked it up, and then that was available. So uh, I just I bought it. And that was it. That's amazing, and man. I, I mean, yeah, it, and it kind of it definitely relates to your name. I mean, even with zebras, you're pushing points, but in a different yeah, way. <laughs> just in a different way. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no That's doubt. Amazing. And it's funny because, like, um, you know. I see the name uh, for other people. Like I know there's people who have similar monikers, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, whenever I've looked at it, I get more offended with that than mm -hmm. I do with the guy who has my exact real full name, like on my birth certificate. Oh wow! <laughs> so, <laughs> so it's pretty funny. It's, it's your identity now, right? I mean, I guess it's point pusher and it's to the point, basically. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Sure. And then uh, I think uh, I think as I've gotten older, I've gotten better at hopefully at uh, like sort of listening to people, listening to people with different opinions, whatever. Mm -hmm. When I was way younger, like when I got that name, I was in my early 20s and it was like, uh, you know, very opinionated, like a lot of young men. So uh, one of my friends used to joke like it's not about, you know, the computer. It's your point pusher is like you push your point. You know, oh, like your, yes, your point too. of view, you know, and it made me feel bad. I was like, oh, I got to change. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, uh, it's not necessarily bad if you have a good point and if you push it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess. <laughs> Lis listening to one of, I was listening to one of your videos, um, mm -hmm. the one where you were giving sort of uh, advice for every character artist. Mm -hmm. And yeah, it was, it was it's, it's like, I was going to say this before the thing, but I wanted to tell you during like after we started recording is phenomenal it's one of the That's best right. pieces of advice like everything you said i was like yes 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 <laughs> when, you got, when you got to the personality part you know you got to the part where you talked about being good to work with and stuff yeah and that's it that's exactly it you know i yeah. i used to think and i and i still work with people who are like this now that are my age you know or like the last few jobs that i've had uh -huh. people people that should be old enough to know better now you're not like young in a work environment oh, yeah. you should be old enough to know better that like being right and being correct are not the same i agree and and it's like that's the that's you know um i've had friends really good friends that uh you know they thought that the being correct validated their righteous sort yes. of attitude and I, i've gotten caught in that too honestly but it's like nowadays i try not to get caught in that and it's mm -hmm. because when i see those people i cast myself in that position and i go oh god am i like that and then i get paranoid and then i try not to do it you know what i mean it's yeah. weird it's a weird it's a weird thing but. i mean if you know yourself then you can control it better right i mean i used to yeah. do that mistake like constantly trying to be the right person in the room but as I grew older and with more experience, I actually realized that I could see myself. And, and actually, one of the things that helped me a lot was like reading books about self-discovery, discipline, yeah. you know, life, um, different things. Actually, like I, I read a book from um, I know I don't know if you know, know this book, uh, Man's Search for Meaning, from Viktor Frankl. It's a very no. famous book. It's, it kind of humbles you and it 
gives you hope for life. It's a very good book. I'll put the link in the description when I share this oh, video. Oh, please. Thank you. And I give you the link as well. Yeah. And then another book from Tony Robbins. And then when you, when I read these books, I started to, you know, there's actually a lot, like many more books that I read about self-discovery, you know, um, improving yourself and everything. And at that point, I kind of started seeing the points that I was wrong. Yeah, you know. Then at some point, I started making these videos, making podcasts, and all the, uh, everything. When I was seeing myself talking, that was like a aha moment. I could I could feel what's wrong with me, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's it it you you realize, and and you know, I'm haunted by interactions that I've had with people uh -huh. when I thought that way. You know what I mean? Like I yes. think back to especially like early early blue sky days. And I'll tell you one that's that's like uh, really ridiculous. And I think about this twice a month. Wow! Like, seriously, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I know exactly what you're talking yeah. about. Like once you get to that enlightenment, I don't know. Maybe I can call it enlightenment. Then you cannot get rid of it, and it's yeah. constantly under your. Yeah, yeah, I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, go yeah. ahead. Sorry. No, no, no. There was a there was a guy that we were working with who was literally brilliant. You know, he's a guy that like uh, wrote a renderer when he was twenty. Or something like that, you know, so he was like literally brilliant and, um, you know, very smart guy. Uh, he was from Germany and uh, I did something. I was like, you know, I started as an assistant and I did something and I was like sort of a little proud of myself. You know, I 23 years ago, right? This is a long, yeah, a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, and uh, he um, he basically, you know, he looked at it uh -huh. and he said, wunderbar. You know, which I know now is a compliment, right? Okay. And I did not know that then. Wow. So jo jokingly, like I turned to him and I, I hit him in the ribs and I was like, your mama. And he goes, what? Wow. And I was like, if it's bad, your mama. But if it's good, hey, your mama. And I was like trying to joke around with him. Okay. <laughs> and I could tell the humor was just not there for him he wasn't having it <laughs> no, and it wasn't until years later we had a quick discussion about it and he was and and in a very like super stereotypical german way mm -hmm. he let me explain that i was a joke and here's what the joke means and whatever and he was like i got it it just wasn't funny <laughs> you know what i mean so, <laughs> <laughs> but that but little interactions like that i think about over yeah. the year and it's like little misplaced sort of gaffes or whatever yeah. Or times in a meeting when I think I'm right and yeah. someone else. There was a time we had an animator, super nice guy, and he uh, was really pushing for something that I think everybody in the room felt was impossible for the resources oh. that we had. And we just kept going around and around and around. And finally, I turned to the person that was taking notes and I was like, hey, so Matt wants magic. Just take that note and then let's move on, you know, whatever. And we all laughed and joked about it, but I'll never forget. I looked at him and it was not funny to him, you know, and I, I apologized to him afterwards. You know, I immediately realized like I was trying to be funny, but it didn't. Land. When was this? Like you were young at the time? Oh, man. Yeah. This is still early, like blue sky days, you know, mm -hmm. so it's like, yeah. And it was like, you know, I apologized to him afterwards. I don't even know if that person remembers this interaction. But I do, you know what I mean? And it's yeah, like, it stays in your mind. Yeah, I try not to, to be like that anymore. Yeah, it's like, that's just not, there's a time and a place for everything. It, you yeah. said it best in that, that video. You said, you know, you let people make their own choices. And then if they do ask you for help, you always, always do it as a suggestion. Yeah, you know? I mean, that's how it should be. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. Mean, and I mean, they may or may not listen. Yeah. Yeah. Even now, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm doing workshops and then when people at mentorship, not workshops. And then when I teach people, I'm like, this is my way. You need to discover your own way. Yes. I mean, I'm just giving you a, um, basically pushing you one step higher so you can go the way, like never follow my way because you can change it at some point. Yeah. You know, this is just to show you how you can like a music musician, basically. Right. I mean, if a musician tries to copy other musicians, then there's no original music, basically, right? I mean, it's, right. it's every form of art. But, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I think when we are young, I actually remember, like, when I was younger, I, at some point, when you pass at the age of 30, you become wiser and um, basically more mature. But when you're younger, the insecurities and, you know, like, you're trying to get into the market or 
find a job and you're like, I need to prove myself to people that I'm good. What are they thinking about me? You know, all those thoughts. I'm sure you went through it. I went through it, you know. Yeah, 100%. You you nailed it. It's insecurity more than anything else. Yes. More than anything else. And it's like you you see it all the time. We've had in my last job, I had a couple of uh, junior people Mm -hmm. come through at different times. And you could really, really see it. And I had to remind myself, there was one person I was interacting with a lot. And I had to remind myself, remember when you were like this. Remember when you were like this and, mm-hmm. and how you wish that somebody told you. Yeah. And I told them and it didn't stop their behavior. But I hope that at some point they recognize later on, oh, this is what he meant. And I tried to make sure to say it in a way that was like just advice and not mean and saying, hey, I do the same things. You know what I mean? But yeah. I over time you get better results if you try it this way you know yeah. and it's like but and and they couldn't get out of their own way and i had the same thought that it was just it's literally it's that kid in the class going oh i know i know you know exactly. and that's really that's all it is you know so it's like yeah that's uh but but yeah it's it's prevalent yeah and some you know i over the years i should have realized that if i mean in situations like that the best thing to do is like to do the opposite thing like if you know, now nowadays, like I used to like comment a lot on social media when I was disagreeing with someone, and I'm like, this guy is wrong. I need to make him accept that he's wrong. And then I realized it's not the way to go. No, you cannot change anyone's mind. You know. Yeah. And then yeah. now I'm like, just to get it out of my system, I write the comment and I read it and I delete it. <laughs> you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm getting the, uh, you know, the rush, the you know, because it's like. I don't know, like your chemicals, dopamine or whatever it's causing it, you know? Yeah. So I try to flush it that way. And then I think over time, it's like now I'm looking at something on Facebook or when someone says something, I'm like, yeah, okay, sure. I, I'm not, yeah. I don't need the confirmation. I don't need to prove anything, you know? Yeah. And it's actually better this way. People like you more. You can communicate easier. You can do the yep. work in every aspect, not just, yep. you know, even even yep. with, with your family, with, with friends, with anyone. Yeah. So I think, I think for a while I was in the same boat where it was like, you know, I would see things on social and do the same thing. And um, there's a a famous quote. I don't remember how the exact quote goes, but I know it's paraphrased in a song by Jay-Z. And he says, uh, uh, people always told me don't argue with fools because people from a distance can't tell who is who. Exactly. I agree. That's exactly it. At some point I realized you're more brave than me because I won't type it. Because if I type it, yes, I'm, I'm afraid to send. <laughs> so I mean, for me, I don't even type it. I just go. I just try to remind myself, like, yeah, this person's being a. F-. We all take turns wearing the foolish hat. It's easy to go. Yes, oh, it's cool. That person's wearing the foolish hat right now, and if I argue with them, I'm putting it on too. I need I'm to. Kidding. I need to write that sense that sentence. We all take turns in our foolish hat. Yeah, yeah. yeah Everybody that, that is so true. That is so true. Sometime. Yeah, for some at some point. Yeah, you know. But, I, I, that's the problem, I think, it, the, here in America, especially, you know, everybody walks around thinking that other people who have an opposite view of you is dumb. And you know but what? They, what's interesting? Like, if you put yourself, like, imagine this. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm trying to prove a point to someone. If I put myself in, the, in, I mean, in the shoes of that other person that I'm trying to correct or prove to him, whatever. If I'm that person, will, will I take my own advice or whatever I'm trying right. to say? Right or wrong doesn't matter, right? Right. Yeah. So, your, your opinion is there regardless. Like yes. your opinion, it's possible that we can have a discussion. Yes. We both have to be willing. We both have to be open. And you have to be open to share your ideas in a way that's not so abrasive that I won't take them. Yeah. And I have to be receptive to receive those ideas, process them, and then compare them to my own. And then make. And a lot of people. You know, that's just not sort of the way a lot of social discourse, you have to earn trust in our culture. 100%, yeah. Do that first. You know, you can do that with your friends probably, but prob- not really with people who are only co-workers or strangers, whatever. You yeah. Know? Yeah, I agree. And th- something I wish was different. No, uh, yeah, I agree. And I mean, it's just like, it kind of requires a bit of open-mindedness, you know, like just be open to what you hear from others. You know, I mean... Like there are different cases, obviously, like when someone is criticizing you for what you do or making joke of your 
goals or whatever, you can just ignore that person instead of arguing, right? Yeah. So, yeah, but I mean, in no case, actually, I would argue anymore with anyone, to be honest with you. Like, the, the older I get, I feel like it's better to change myself than changing um, others. Yeah. If, if it was possible that you could get into a heated discussion with someone, they could still process your ideas and then they would go, you know what? Mm, I think you're right. And then you yes. think change. if that was possible, then sure. Argue, argue. It's valid. You know, cool. And people that I've met who are, you know, distinctly from other cultures around the world, most notably certain parts of, you know, um, uh, Europe or the Middle East, you, you can have those kinds of mm -hmm. more vocal sort of uh, conversation general discourse mm -hmm. you know what I mean? it's like yeah. you don't you don't have to sort of tiptoe around the way that you do here mm -hmm. uh, and the way it's sort of it, it's like um it's just like what we said when you have someone who's junior in a working environment they yeah. haven't had enough social interaction to know better societally i think america so i don't want to turn this into a political thing but i think society in america is sort of like that mm -hmm. For long we've been so repressed with we have to be kind to each other on the surface yes and now that's been removed for a lot of people and all that's left is abrasiveness I because agree. we have had enough years of people going we disagree but we agree to disagree up to a certain point there's some some lines i think that are too far probably but yeah it's like up to a certain point you should be able to have a disagreement and go you feel your way, I feel my way, and we don't have to hate each other. And it's like, but that's not really prevalent right now. But maybe, maybe yeah. one day, we'll see, I don't know. I mean, the, it, the, there's a lot of, like, uh, I noticed, like, unfortunately, in our, in our industry, at, at least I experienced, experienced it that way. Like, there's a lot of a strong opinion. I was like that at some point, but yeah. I changed it, you know? The, the more I grow, I, I try to change it, basically. Yeah. But it's, as you said, like, you will see people, like, at their, like, 48 years old, someone is criticizing everything you do criticizing all, all your work it's just like that's all they do every day all day yeah that's all they do you know <laughs> especially like um you know the, the worst part will be like when they get into a management position mm. that will be a scary <laughs> yeah. you know you know the 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 worst uh, not enough companies recognize i think that leadership is a particular skill that has nothing to do with how well you do the job that you're leading yes you know it's it's a it's a thing i've seen every place that i've ever worked where there are people who are in leadership positions that really are just the best person at that job and you've hurt yourself double if you're a company you've taken a person who's really good at a thing and said hey don't do that thing anymore yeah. Be responsible for everybody else doing that thing. So now that person, usually, unless they have that ambition to do something different, is not happy. Yeah, and you reduced, you know, the the work that they can put into the project. It's so weird. Yeah, you mean but, like you mean like if someone is like in a leadership position, they should be good as a as an artist. If it's an art position, is that what you're saying? Oh no no, the opposite. They oh, the should opposite. Be good, yeah, they should be good at leadership. Yes yes, so, like, leadership they, is different. Whether, whether they are whether they are good or not at art, mm -hmm. like like you're leading a character art team, let's say or whatever. Yes. I don't think the best character artist should be necessarily promoted to the leader. Yes, I think the best leader and communicator and person that's going to be able to delegate and manage time and help people. Those are the things that 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 person needs to do the most. Yeah, and if you have somebody who has no desire to be in that leadership position yes but but they happen to be the best artist to force them into that role is tough and yes, i've yes. seen i've seen that happen a few times and it's like but man look at him he's miserable he doesn't want to do this <laughs> <You> <laughs> yes know? but you know it, no I, I i agree up here yeah yeah and it's just like it's going to be the worst situation for that person i 100 percent agree yeah so um what is like um I'm just curious. I, I don't know, like, how much you can share. Uh, I mean, what made you to become an artist to come to this field and get into, like, go to? Uh, you said Blue Sky, right? 
Oh yeah. So um, so uh, this is gonna definitely give away my my age and how old I am. When I was, <laughs> when I was in college, uh-huh. when I was in college, so I I grew up in the Bronx. Um, my mother and father were not around. Uh, they both uh, were on drugs. Oh. And, and I was with my grandparents. Sorry to hear that. I mean, me too, but, you know, they missed out. I, I turned out okay. Yeah, <laughs> but, they, missed, but they missed the point for sure. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> then, no, so, so, you know, that was, that was how it was back then. And then uh, for me, I just uh, used to retreat and uh-huh. draw a lot, you know. So I used to draw a lot as a kid. And that was where I used to get a lot of praise, you know, in wow. school or from family or whatever. Oh, wow. You drew that? Oh, wow. You know, and it just, it was something that, so I was always interested in art. And uh, when I got to college, because of my history with my parents, I was one of these people that was completely straight edge. I was afraid to drink. I was mm-hmm. afraid to do drugs and all that. Stuff. I didn't do anything. And um, so they would have on campus uh, these uh, uh, like alcohol free movies and stuff like that. They would have movies that were in the theater. They would show them on Friday night. They would have popcorn, all this stuff, whatever. And you go into a big auditorium with a bunch of other people who mm-hmm. didn't want to go out to the bars and whatever. And it was a way for them to keep people basically off the roads because it was very cold where we went to school. Mm-hmm. So it's like trying to keep drunk kids off the road, really, is what wow. it is. So, yeah, we. so I went and I saw like Jurassic Park and The Abyss. And I saw all these movies, but it looked like science to me. I was like, this is really cool. I don't know what I'm looking at, but this is really cool. Yeah. And then I saw Toy Story. Oh, wow. And yes. I saw Toy Story. It was like literally three days. I saw Toy Story. And then the next day, I saw someone who lived on my floor in my dorm. <laughs> and she was coming out of the art building where I was taking like, like sort of introductory drawing and painting classes. <laughs> and I thought I wanted to be an art teacher. And then... Um, when I saw her coming out, I was like, oh, I didn't know you took art classes. And she's like, oh, yeah, I'm in the graphics lab downstairs. What's that? And she took me downstairs and I was like, this is the Toy Story stuff. And <laughs> she was like, yeah, you know, sort of. And she showed me what she was doing. And she introduced me to the professor and I basically begged him to get into the class. And there's all these prerequisites you have to take, like two years worth. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I don't want to wait. Like, what can I do? So he made me his assistant. So now I had a key to the labs and everything. And this is pre PCs. So it's like SGIs and, and, you know, there were $20,000 machines and the software was $10,000 or something crazy like that. This is stuff I wow. could never. At the afford. time you could buy a house with that. For sure. They <laughs> were insane and they oh had my like goodness. Control. So he made me the assistant and then I, I had a key to his office. So I would go into his office at night. Uh-huh. Like on a Friday night, and I would sit there and I would read the manual. And my girlfriend would come with me and she would study. And she's studying her stuff in the corner of his office. And I'm studying manuals for like what eventually became Autodesk software, you know? And it's wow. like, yeah, it's, you know, so, and I was just in love. I was in love. And then when, when I was a junior, mm-hmm. I went away on break and I was on academic probation. Uh, because um, I basically was failing everything except for my computer graphics classes because I was like so focused. I was like, I only need to do the bare minimum to stay in school to learn this. Mm-hmm. And that same that same girl, her name is Danielle Cambridge. She worked at Pixar for a lot of years. Wow. Uh, and, she, and she worked with me at Blue Sky. She got a job at Blue Sky. And then that uh, one of the breaks, like Christmas or Thanksgiving or something, um, she called me and she's like, Hey, do you want to come visit blue sky? And I was like, sure. And I went and, uh, I met the people, whatever. And I was like, I'll do anything to work here. I'll do anything to work here. And there was a lady that was there, uh, named Andrea Brown. She sat me down and she basically gave me an on the spot interview. And she called me the next day and said, Hey, Danielle is getting promoted. She doesn't know yet. Don't tell her. Do you want to take her job? I was like, well, I can take it in a year when I graduate. And she's like, no, you're not listening to me. Do you want to take her job? Wow. I was like, I can be there Monday. And she was like, slow down. You could be here in two weeks. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, and that's how I got, that's how I got my job. And I was like, you know, once I started working, I was like, I might go back to school, but I'm not going back to that school because it's too far away from you here. You didn't graduate, right? Yeah. Nope. I need to learn here. And I, I've been in the business ever since. Wow. That's one, amazing. One day I might. 
One day I might. I don't know. Just you to do it. To. You should I, teach now. <laughs> well, I, I've been so so from from Blue Sky. Um, I ended up. Uh, they have a school of visual arts is also in mm-hmm. New York. At the time, Blue Sky was in up in uh, Westchester County, just above New York. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, um, a friend of mine that I worked with, came to me and said, "Hey, I'm supposed to mentor the student from SBA, but she really needs a lot of modeling help. Mm-hmm. Do you do you want to help her? Um, because I'm basically focusing on rigging." So I helped her, and we developed a good relationship. She ended up working at Blue Sky years later, uh, and um, you know through that sort of relationship they offered me a class and then i taught there for about 10 years wow 10 years like since you i mean you were working at uh, blue sky and teaching at the same time yeah yeah so on that's amazing on the weekends i was teaching one class at the beginning it was very like introductory and the most freeing thing you what you said about um you know insecurity yeah the most freeing thing from that experience was the first two or three years that i taught I would still like even now us talking. I have a little bit of nervousness, right? But like appropriate yeah. nervousness, right? You don't want yes. me to fool so. But I would get literally like sick, like just like oh, oh wow, like, anxiety, feel, right? Yeah, anxiety, just terrible. Before every single class, and, like like not just the first class, but like every single week until about the end of the semester when you sort of know everybody uh-huh. and you guys all sort of trust each other. And then one year I went in. And uh, it was like my third or fourth year teaching. I went in and I said, hey, you know what? Um, I always try to over prepare for these classes mm-hmm. and I'm not going to do that anymore. And I just basically went on like a 10 minute rant with kids. And I was just like, so here's what we're going to do. You're going to ask me questions that I do not know the answer to. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to make it my job to go find that answer and come back with it next week. You know, and yes. it was the mo- all of a sudden everything went you know, you don't have wow. to be, and it was like the humility to go, I don't know everything was huge. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah. from then on, I've always tried to, but after I left Blue Sky, uh, I went to go work out West at, uh, I was in Washington. I was in uh, uh, Bellevue at Arena Net mm-hmm. uh, five years. Oh, you were in Bel- Bellevue in Washington here? Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was at Arena Net for five years. Oh, um, Arena Net. Okay, cool. Yeah, I went to go work with a former art director uh from blue sky there which year was this 2000 and 2008 to uh 12 30, something like that oh wow yeah, like that yeah so um you know it was um it was uh it was the best learning experience ever because there were so many people there who uh-huh. had some more experience than me i was very honest with them when i came in same same principle I was like, I'm not going to put pressure on myself and go there and lie and say, I don't know. I know how to do stuff. I don't. Yes. I told them I've never done anything in games, but they were working on a prototype game for a while that, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I knew had a long runway and that's where I did most of my learning, you know, and uh, it was a great experience. Mm-hmm. And then uh, from there, I went to DreamWorks. After that, I had a friend that called and was like, hey, we need people. Uh, so I applied and we went to DreamWorks. I was there for five years. And uh, uh, what was brother, it in California? In California, Southern, mm-hmm. Southern California. And then my brother-in-law passed away. Oh, sorry. Um, about that. Yeah, no, and and you know, uh, uh, twenty long time ago. Gosh, it's been seven years, something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. But he passed away, and then uh, we ended up coming here to upstate New York to be closer to family. Our family is down in Westchester and also in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, so they're only a couple hours away, you know, and, um, we came here, uh, there's an Activision, uh, Blizzard company here, mm-hmm. uh, Vicarious Visions. And, um, that was where I was at until January. DreamWorks called me back and said, Hey, do you want to work remote? And I've always wow. wanted to work from home. So they yes. offered me a, a work from home position. Uh, so I've been doing that since January. So I was working from home right before everything came apart. You know, well, yeah, like, exactly like me, but you, yeah. you didn't feel anything, right? For me, it's like, I'm like, this is normal yeah. to me. <laughs> yeah, everyone is complaining. I lock myself at home and I just work and enjoy. You know? Yeah, I, I've been I've been enjoying it a lot, but it was like I got to. So I had everything set up before they had to set up 3000 people. 
So wow. it was like when everybody else is like, oh, my internet connection, this and that, and blah, blah, blah. It's like, you know, everybody's trying to figure it out for a little while. Mm -hmm. I had already been through that a couple of months before. Yeah. So I was like, oh, man. That's, that's good that you <laughs> Yeah, I'm just working. You know? you know what's interesting? When you work from home, this is my experience. I don't know. I want to hear your thoughts as well. I feel like you're way more productive. You're way less stressed. You can do the job better. Um, you get results, better results. I mean, obviously, you save time in traffic, and you can do a lot more during the day. Like, if like you finish your work, and then you can do other things, see your family, or read a read a book, or you know, I don't know. If you, do you feel the same? I do, and I like the freedom to manage. So, uh, you know, I've got a son who's twenty. I've got a daughter who's eighteen. Twenty years old. How old are yeah. you, if you don't mind? Forty-five. Uh, I, I am sixty-one years old. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I'm just kidding. No, I'm 40. <laughs> wow, man, you got me. I'm like, what? <laughs> no, 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 I'm, 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 40, I'm 45. Okay, and, that uh, was a spot on there. <laughs> no, no, I just, I just turned 45. Uh, 61 years old. <laughs> my, son, my son's 20 and my daughter is 18. And then wow. we have a younger daughter who's 10. Wow, so that's amazing, man. Congratulations. Thanks. The 10-year-old especially needs a lot of attention and being home now yeah. and everything is tough, you know, so... Uh, if I know I have something that's due tomorrow, mm -hmm. then I can make sure that we have lunch together today. That's you know what amazing. I mean? I can make that's sure that we, you know, so like all those things, um, being able to say, okay, I'm going to spend a little time with her during the day mm -hmm. and then work a little late. Or my wife gets up really early to go to work. She's a nurse. So <laughs> oh. she gets up really early and I have to, you know, sometimes well, get up with her to it, get work done. Mm -hmm. Is her job yeah. harder at this situation or? So it's weird. She was in a situation where um, she's a sort of a specialist. She works in, uh, she's an OR nurse specifically. Mm -hmm. And uh, the kind of patients that she works with are immunocompromised usually. Mm -hmm. So when everything went crazy in New York City, again, it wasn't that bad up here. They were actually sending people from the city up here for a while, you know, because of the overflow. So for her and the hospitals statewide, they shut down the kind of surgeries that she does. Wow. So her and her team and other people at the hospital that does what she does, they all got furloughed for a little while. So she was home for a couple of months, which I loved having her home. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, I know you the know, feeling. So that, yeah, that was great. You know what I mean? For me, she just went back. They just, um, you know, once, once the city regulated, um, mm -hmm. they sort of reopened up those kinds of surgeries and she's back now and she comes home and she complains about all the safety protocols they have to go through. But every time she complains, I'm like, you know what I mean? Cause I just yeah. want her to be safe, you know? So yes. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, but when you say, when you say you're in New York, people go, Oh my God. Yeah. And then when you stay say, away from this guy, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's the source say, of it. <laughs> yeah. Your, your, your wife is from, you know, your wife is working in a hospital. They go, Double like, you know, like <laughs> danger. Yeah, it, red light. Not, we've been very, very fortunate given the circumstances. Mm -hmm. And and my son, that's twenty. He's in school to be an EMT. Oh wow! So, yeah, so yeah, it's uh, my my brother in law that passed away. That's what he was, and my son was very motivated by that. And oh, it was something he, he wanted to do. Yeah. So any of your yeah. kids are artists. Uh, my, my oldest daughter, it, I, I think the youngest one, I can't tell yet, like, cause mm -hmm. she draws a lot and draws a lot with me and stuff, but it's, you know, kids draw. Yes. But, yes. but my, my oldest daughter, she's way better than I was when I was her age. Oh, really? Know? Yeah. And she has no desire, I think, to be any kind of professional art, anything. Um, she wants to be, she wants to be a teacher and, uh, she's going to college in the fall, hopefully, you oh, know, to good. be be a teacher and um i just look and i'm like man i never want to pressure anybody to try to do anything but man you could really you could really do cool work yeah you know but she you can, know she can keep it as a hobby because you never know like uh, when i was a kid i was i played piano for a bit and then i stopped and then i was like i never thought that i would like music but three years ago suddenly i i was hearing my friend was playing and then i was like i should learn how to play classical music and then since then i'm in love with music yeah, you're like composing stuff now, right? I'm trying to, yes. I'm trying to learn. I have a teacher actually in my right. classes tomorrow. So I'm, I'm, I'm on the earliest stages. I play some, I play um, like Chopin pieces, some Beethoven, some Mozart. Uh, it's been like three years. I was practicing really hard. Like at some point I was practicing five hours, six hours a day. You know, wow. yes, like crazy hours. Man. Um, 
I now because of doing this podcast and working and teaching and you know and other things, I, I'm less like maybe one hour, two hours a day. Yeah. But I'm trying to I'm, I'm trying to find a way to optimize the way I work and be, be more effective so I can increase the hours on that because music is something that you have to practice a lot to to get good at it. There's no shortcut basically. Yeah. It's all about like you know trying different patterns and teaching your brain what works, what doesn't work. So. Yeah. And so let me ask you a question with that. Like, uh, just out of curiosity, it's a yeah. debate. I have a couple of friends that, you know, we hang out online sometimes or whatever. And I would say this debate comes up once a year, probably. Mm. We all get into a heated argument about it. <laughs> um, how do you feel about talent versus skill? Honestly, it's hard to say. Um, I think, well, here's here's what I can tell you, because I don't want to say I'm talented or I'm not talented. I don't know. That's for people to judge, right? My parents were always telling me you're talented. My friends were telling me you're talented. I never believed in myself that way, right? Yeah. But I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a hard worker. Like, if I want to do something, I'll find a way to do it no matter what, you yeah. know? And... And I actually get to a point that my wife complains, like she's like, you need to sleep now, you know, or, you know, it's like my parents, I remember like when I was working as an, as an artist trying to become an, become a sculptor, um, you know, sculpting ZBrush and all that, like I was sometimes wake, staying up up to, up to like 4 a.m. in the morning and my father was coming up and he was getting upset. He was like, you're playing games now. This is wasting <laughs> time. Go to bed. You need to go to yeah, school yeah. tomorrow, you know, things like that. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think, I think. This is what I think. I think we all equally have certain um, skills, certain talents, right? We might be good on some stuff. Maybe we're, we're, we're bad on some other stuff. But no matter what, like if you practice and push yourself, you will get to a good level. You know? Yes. Some, yes. Like, for example, some stuff you cannot do it um, because, like, for example, for a musician, someone who has a perfect pitch, like, you know, those people that... Un- feel the music um, notes and tones and they hear it, they can play it immediately. They know which which note, which chord you're playing. Uh, that's um, I think that's a physical superpower, you know? Um, I don't know if it can be trained. Honestly, I, I searched a lot about it on the internet. Like, um, um, it's hard to, to say. Like, for example, Franz Litz, I don't know if you, you know him. He, he's a famous uh, romantic era musician. He was basically, when he was listening to a piece of music, he would play it immediately and then change it, right? So he could he could feel the notes and tones in his head. So that's a talent. That's like a physical, probably yeah. physical skill, right? But learning music, for example, I never ever thought that I can play piano. Hmm. And, I, and my teacher is telling me like, you're learning faster than any of my students, which is weird. Hmm. I'm like, are you kidding me? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I think hard work and, and consistency is, is the key. Yes. Right. But there's like, obviously, like sometimes you have some physical um, limitations, like maybe your joints are too stiff. You cannot play fast, you know. Um, But but I think I look at it this way. I'm like uh, every human being is destined for for greatness, no matter where you come from, no matter how hard your life is. Some of us are unfortunate. You know, war happens. They die, unfortunately, or other for other reasons. Right. But we are when we are born. I feel like equally we are destined for greatness. And if if you imagine life as a as a line, you can decide where you want to stop. You know, hmm. if you stop there, then you you stop there and you're you're satisfied. But if you continue, the end of the line is death. But but for me, it's like growing in life. There's no limit to it. You can grow as much as you want if you work hard, if you enjoy what you're doing, as long as you are alive. Right? Yeah. It's it's like. How do I say? Like, there's like two end to it. There's death, right? But there's also like you can continue, and there's no limit. Like, I mean, Jeff Bezos, for example, he had a dream. He started the dream. Now he's dominating the whole, um, you know, market like online market, like selling everything. Yeah, you know, he's buying everyone. <laughs> so it's insane. Yeah, it is. And he never thought about it, right? I mean, or look at Elon Musk, right? He had a dream. He wanted to go to Mars. Now he's He's sure that he's going to Mars. There's no question about it. Yeah. So I think it, it's crazy. Yeah, it is. So I mean, I don't know where where do you stand for it? Like, do you think it's talent or do you think it's a lot of hard work and there's some talent? So I, like I said, when I was more opinionated, less open minded, I think mm-hmm. I would get offended internally. I wouldn't say it out loud, mm-hmm. but I would get offended internally about people saying, "Oh, you're talented." 
Uh -huh. Because for me, I felt like it's not talent, it's skill. You're trying to develop a skill. Yes. And you have to you have to sit down and you have to and the lie that I used to tell myself was mm -hmm. there's times when I don't want to be sketching or drawing or painting or learning or whatever. There's times where I don't want to do that, but I do it anyway and I force myself to go through it because I want to get better. And yes. that's it's like a job, it's like work, it's like whatever. So it's not really innate talent. It's not like uh you know, a magic fairy came down and touched me with her wand, right? It's not like that. But the that's where you is, grow, actually. Yeah, but the truth is, I was lying to myself. Oh, that's not, that's not true. I don't, I don't remember a single time when I've been sitting there sketching and I'm like, I don't want to be doing this. That's a lie. <laughs> yeah. Yes. I think the talent part really is, like you said, you can go and then you can stop, right? Yes. The talent is that you like it so much that you don't you stop. don't you don't stop and then with like anything else you'll get better at it if you just keep practicing and yeah like you said there's physical limitations but there's also physical attributes so like someone who can play something by ear or something like that it's like the thing that they can they can hear a song once and maybe recreate it you know yeah yeah even if it's through trial and error uh, who knows, right? If there's some particular concavity in their skull or yes. in their ear that makes them hear a thing or process a thing, some synapses connect or something, there's some physical attribute to it or whatever, like you said, you can have that be the detriment in your joints or you can have it be the, the positivity. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I think you can be physically predisposed, right? But yes. the, the example I used to always give people in class is, it, you know, Michael Jordan is considered the best basketball player ever by a lot of people. Yeah. He's also considered to have a monster work ethic, right? Yes. Those, it's not a coincidence, right? No, if it's he, not. If he has never practiced, he's not talented enough to still be the best guy because there are other people who are working. 100% I agree with that. Yes. And be a tall scrub. You know, so that's that's what would have happened to him, you know? I, so I, You know what I think? I think um, definitely like pushing hard like especially at the times that you feel like you don't want to do it uh, what i say to people usually like when i talk to people or teach or talk to friends when there's a debate like this i'm like if you try to put yourself under pressure you're kind of like your your how do i say like maybe i can say survival mode in your brain or your body or kicks in and it pushes you to pass those boundaries yeah. go to the next level and i think yeah. pressure has something to do with it because now you said this, you said my parents were addicted and I had to live with my grandparents, right? Maybe if that wasn't the case, maybe you wouldn't be this person. Facts. Right? Yeah. And, and it's the same with me. Like every time I started like learning, I had a really hard time to convince to my parents to, to buy a computer for me. And I was actually lucky that they did it, right? A couple of times. And then eventually like I felt like, okay, my, my father doesn't understand what I want to do. Because obviously they're not at my age, they don't see the, the future the way I see it. I'm a young man, right? I mean, 17, 18 years old at the time. Yeah. And I realized, okay, so I need to figure out something to push myself forward. And that pressure, I remember like, I was talking to my friend and I was like, how can I make $3,000 to buy a supercomputer? And the supercomputer at the time was crap, basically. You couldn't do anything <laughs> <laughs> for that price, right? I mean, now yep. it's much, much better. Yeah. And I was like struggling. How can I do that? And I was coming up with ideas. Like I had a computer that I had a DVD writer, right? So I was burning discs to, to sell it to people, like some, whatever they wanted. Like if they wanted to copy something, they were, they would come to my house, you know, I would copy the disc and then get paid for it. Or yeah. I would, you know, things like that, like really cheesy work, right? To, to basically make some money to push myself. And then at some point I got, um, a job from from a company called First for Figure. We are. I'm still friends with the guy. His name is Alex. I don't know. He's gonna watch this. I'm gonna send him the video. <laughs> he's he's doing collectibles. He's one of the really good companies out there doing collectibles for famous characters, games, comics, and things like that. I'll send you a link after as well. Yeah, man. And then I got paid like hundred dollar at the time for this job. He paid me hundred dollar, and my my father was like, "Oh, you're getting paid. So let me buy you a computer. Maybe you can get paid more." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. So that actually led to this and that momentum hasn't stopped since then. Imagine this, like since 2002, it's been 18 years. Yeah. And I'm, and I'm, and I'm just, I'm, I, since then I, I kept going and going and going. Now, after when I turned 33, there was a shift in my mindset 
And I was like, maybe I should try to do other things. Maybe I should change my life in a way. And, you know, um, things actually are getting much better now. Like, um, I'm working from home for with a team, which is great. It's a super a, a super good experience. Um, um, doing this podcast, you know, this is actually a great experience for me. Talking to someone like you, you know, um, I value this a lot because um, if I get to talk to too many artists like you, it's a great experience for me. I can I can learn the wisdom and hear them. You know, it's, it's such a such a good experience, right? If I didn't keep going, I wouldn't be here to to get this to practice this experience or get them. How do I say like to enjoy this moment? I don't know how to experience it. It's it's different, right? Yeah, yeah, and and you know, to to that something something Mihai brought up in his talk was lunch crunch. Yes. And I used to do this a lot more and be able to connect with a lot of different artists. He was one of them, you know? Yeah. And it's funny because I didn't know all of his personal like uh, work history. I just knew him as this guy that showed up doing these one hour studies that were blowing my mind. And I was like, man, who is this dude? <laughs> and we started <laughs> talking. Good. Yeah. He's, he's great. Like he would, he would rough in anatomy so quickly mm -hmm. and like all the landmarks were readable so quickly. Yes. I was like, man, and that's so when I was at ArenaNet, that's how Lunch Crunch started. started. I was I, I recognized and I was very honest with the people on my team. There is a knowledge deficit here. I know how to do some things mm -hmm. and I don't know how to do other things. And I started sitting at my desk every day and working oh, and wow. I would give myself the hour to do it. And then a couple of other people on the team who like were just tremendous artists and I would look and I was like, man, I felt like the runt of the litter. You know, I was the little mm -hmm. puppy and there were a bunch of like big dogs around me. They started doing it too. And then uh, we started talking about it and I was like, you know what we're using, we're doing this sort of on the company time, like on the company equipment and stuff, but it's our own time. Yeah. I don't want the company to necessarily own this. So I made a blogger was big then and I made a blog and I hmm. called it lunch crunch. And then, um, it, we all start, we all joined and then we all started posting our daily things. We started doing themes and whatever. And it was just a lot of speed sculpts yeah. more than anything. And then, um, eventually somebody left the company and then I left the company and we ended up, um, at different places, mm -hmm. but we wanted keep going and then you start explaining to other people that you work with what it is and then oh can i join that and now it became a thing where it went from like five or six of us to like 20 to 30 to all of a sudden it, it was a yeah it was a hundred and it was like blogger wouldn't let us add any more and one of the people uh was basically like uh you know hey um we could host this on facebook so we did it we migrated it to facebook and uh WordPress first and that wasn't so great and then we moved to Facebook and all of a sudden a few years go by and it was like uh, 35,000 people wow it's, yeah does the page exist now uh, I don't know I don't well so when I when we moved here right uh -huh. so and this is this is sort of the, the mindset right yeah uh, we moved here and every single day I was like trying to scan through and remove bots because like you know, if you do any kind of like administration on Facebook, especially at that time, there's yeah. no tools, right? So yes. you just have to manually like hope that people report things and look at the reports and then, you know, scan the, the sort of feed yourself and then just get rid of bots and get rid of people who are trying to be jerks or whatever. So it was a lot of work. It was like a couple of hours every night after work to like manage this thing. And I wasn't making any money off of it or whatever. And then we moved out here. So we moved to a new place. My kids, you know, were in, uh, my, my son was, you know, a senior in high school at the time. So it was very mm -hmm. tough for him, you know, but we were moving for like family reasons and stuff. You know, my daughter was moving away from all her friends. So it was like a very like tough time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, when I got here, I was like, okay, this is my second time. So I went from film to games, back to film, back to games. And what I always tried to do was when I was going to leave Blue Sky for about a year, mm -hmm. I was practicing making game assets because I wanted to work at a game studio. Mm -hmm. 
And then when I went back to film, it was more familiar, even though the rules are different at Blue Sky. I mean, at DreamWorks and they are at Blue Sky, but it was very familiar. Mm -hmm. And when I was at DreamWorks, I was like, I'm never going to stop making game assets. So I kept making game assets on my own and then, you know, kept in contact with everybody that I worked with in games. And when I went back to games, I was way better at it. And I felt I felt more confident than mm -hmm. I was before. And when I got here, I was like, OK, you know what? We moved here. Um, we're basically isolated geographically from everybody that we know, except for our families a couple hours away. I'm going to really focus and try to do like this right. And then I started to explore monetizing Lunch Crunch. Oh, wow. And one of the things that they, uh, one of the things that they ask you to do when you go work for, you know, any big company is, Hey, can you disclose anything where it might be a conflict of interest or whatever? And I explained the situation with Lunch Crunch that I, it was not monetized. I was not making any money off of it. But I was interested in potentially doing that in the future. Something I wish I never said. Because oh, wow. This is like one Activision? Yeah. And yeah. legal came back and basically was like, we don't know about this, you know, whatever. And it was a couple of weeks of contentious sort of back and forth. Oh, wow. And I was like, all right. So now we're getting to the point where I don't want to jeopardize my job. I've got my family right here. I've got this thing that is sort of a time suck. But obviously I like to do it or whatever. And I, I was like, you know what? I could hand it over to someone else. And I was like, no, you know, like I've seen it happen with other communities. They die. So, yeah. yeah, so this one should die. So I went online and I just announced like, hey, we're shutting down, you know, whatever, blah, blah, blah. There's a legal issue. I don't want to get into it, but whatever. Do you regret and, it or you think it was the right decision? Oh, I've regretted it ever since because wow. I, missed the, I missed the community aspect of it. But what I did learn in that situation was... Uh, there were a bunch of people that were like, you know what? Thank you for doing this the time that you did it. It was great, you know, and, uh, you know, we'll, we'll make something else. There were a bunch. It was funny because it was called Lunch Crunch. But then there were a bunch of people that were um, they made like brunch crunch and brunch the lunch crunch. And they had like all kinds of like like other things. Mm -hmm. And in a way, it was touching because it meant that it meant something to people. So it was actually really cool. I want and, to search um, on Facebook to see if it exists now. Yeah, go for it. But what I did was um, I actually learned, I, I went and I looked at how to, because there was no way mm -hmm. to, there was no way to delete users except for individually without a script. Mm -hmm. So I yes. spent a couple of nights investigating and learned how to write the script to delete. And I said, you know what? This is what I'm going to do. I think this will work. I'm going to hit enter and I'm going to put 10 names in here. And if it deletes those 10 people, that means the script works. And that means I'm going. It's gone. I'm going to stick to the announcement and it's gone. And I hit the button and it worked. And I was like, all right, so there it, it is. Exist. So I just started deleting. But on the way out, there were so many people that were like, F you. This is not real. There's no like legal or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like it's so the damn Isn't website. How could there be? legal and people were so this is mad sad, man this is really sad to be honest uh, okay. it's very sad because I, I honestly i don't understand the i mean some of these corporations mindset if it was me i would encourage it right this is like it's wrong in many levels to be honest with you what i mean it doesn't make sense there's so no conflict of interest interest really here like if you look I, at I it agree. i agree so after i deleted it you know i let the legal department know that i deleted it and they got back to me and they were like oh we didn't know you were going to take that action and i explained like i don't want to play like uh, you know i moved my family here and i don't want to mess around so you know i don't know how serious it was for you guys the fact that it was dragging on made it feel serious to me so i didn't want to i didn't want to play around and i think at that point there was a little bit probably of like legal sort of um on their end sort of like you know oh we want to make sure that you're not going to get mad and like try you could sue them to be honest action. with you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because I, good, I, made the, I made the decision independently to do it. They yeah, didn't yeah. tell me. To do it. Oh, they were okay. just they wanted to keep on asking questions. And I didn't want to get to the point where I was at the end of a rope. Can I say know? something so, to that? Yeah. If I, if I, are you feeling like you want to do it again? Um, no. Really? You don't no. want to bring it back? No, you know, you know what I want? I want, um... I want that sense of community without having to be the person in charge of it. That's oh. really the truth. That's so really the truth. I want to 
enjoy people's company like like this, like how we're having a good conversation mm-hmm. without actually having to be in charge of it. What if That's I what if I handle it and then make a page and bring it back and then 100% do it, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> the name I don't own the name. I don't own the name. No, it's not that. I'm gonna I'm gonna like it's. Just and, and 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 make me a member, and that would be awesome. Please, I want, if I do it, I will make you an admin. Would yeah. you be active in it if I do it? I think I will revert. We've been talking about like getting a better attitude over time. Mm-hmm. I think I will revert and get drunk with power and just uh, start. Somebody says anything, and I'm just like, you're gone. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, you're not that. I know. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, it, it, it would be. I don't know about the admin part. Like I said, I just want to hang out. I don't really want to. Honestly, I feel like I should do this because I I remember like, here's the thing. It's interesting. The interesting part, how universe works. I was talking to Mihai at the time and he was like, I did this during lunch crunch. You should join this group. And my life was good, but I'm like trying. I wasn't in US. I think this is like back in 2013, something like that, right? 12, 13. So I was I was not in US yet and my life was in a different way. I, I didn't know where I'm going, which country I'm gonna land in, and I wasn't planning to come here, but it happened and I'm super happy, like best country. You know, I'm really excited to continue and build this stuff. But he was telling me, and because of the situation I had in life, I couldn't uh I didn't join. And then I was like, What happened to this group? And then until like we did the pos- podcast and he told me like it's it's gone. And i Im- imagine this, like he you say like you know he was one of the artists in the group. But that actually connected us. So that that could be, this could mean something, you know. There's so many people from that time that I'm still friends with online mm-hmm. that we don't talk a lot, you know. So maybe even friends is strong, but acquaintances at least where it's like every once in a while you see they post work mm-hmm. or you know something happens in life. Oh, I had a baby or this or that or whatever, and it's like you feel oddly connected to this person more than you should because you've never been in the same physical space. Yeah. It's weird. It's weird. Yeah, it's very weird. That is interesting. Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. But, you know, the, the other thing about Lunch Crunch that I was feeling at that time and that later on, uh, so maybe a couple of years ago at a Zebra Summit, they did, um, uh, Disney did an event. Mm-hmm. And uh, in the Disney presentation, you know, Zach Petrarch was the, or is, or was, I don't know, yeah. I'm not sure, Amazing the head point. of modeling there, you know. And uh, ever since I first, first started learning ZBrush years and years ago, like ZBrush 2 or something like that, um, I I got one of his DVDs. And it was the first time like I saw, a, yeah, yeah, the yeah. superhuman superhuman male that's in ZBrush. It was yes. him sculpting that. The anatomy not, one, right? Yeah. And yeah. he reads apologized by doing poly paint and brought that back to ZBrush. And I had never seen anything like that. And I was like, my God, this guy is amazing. He was the best. He's still one of the best. I was a fan (laughs) since then, you know. And one of the things that they talked about there, and this is something that I was beginning to feel already at the time when I shut down Lunch Crunch. Mm -hmm. So this is years after Lunch Crunch shut down. One of the things that he said was, you know, there's a lot of people that do Lunch Crunches. And I know that that's not directed at me because it was a term that became universal a lot of people used it right Hmm. and one of the things he said was you know people do lunch crunches but really you have to have focus practice and focus practice you know have a real goal it's okay to work in small increments do speed sculpts and whatever but if your goal is larger like take mihai right the the gaining anatomical knowledge is his larger goal so all of his studies are geared towards that Yes. And lunch crunch towards the end, I tried to push it towards that a little bit more because I was becoming familiar with those things. Mm -hmm. When I heard Zach say it, though, in the meeting, that's the other part where I was like, man, that's the part I think we never really got there to move it to the next level. So if you do something, my thing, the, the initial focus of be fast and see what you can do in an hour for lunch crunch is misguided. It's okay to do that and give yourself a limit if you have an hour for lunch or whatever. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. But have a larger goal artistically. I agree, hundred percent. Yeah, like a, he said, it's so perfect the way he said. It, I was like, man, yeah, a hundred percent. You know, when you say that, I know, like a lot of artists, they work and they post their stuff. I did this in two hours. I did this in one hour and a half. I'm like, that doesn't matter at all. You know, if you the the, the way now now I know it because I made the same mistake before, and now my life is the way I'm planning is like. 
I want to, I imagine myself 10 years from now and I want 10 years from now to, to be on a great situation, to enjoy what I'm doing and level up and all that, right? So I try to use every moment as, as good as I can. So when I reach that 10 year mark, I'm like, okay, I, I got what I wanted, right? Because I, yeah. I know like there's like, uh, when you study something or start a business or whatever you do, um, you grow after 10 years, right? Yes. Because, I mean, I, I don't know what's the reason behind it, like s- scientific reason behind it. I could guess, but I'm not a scientif- sci- sci- scientist, right? But when I look at everyone's life or my life, or I think you, you could look at yours and maybe it's the same. After 10 years, you will feel like, okay, I'm, I'm getting to the next level now. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Percent. So, you, you're going from amateur to professional. And I yeah. think there is something about the idea of a decade. Yes, there you is. Know, from the time when you're a little kid, you know, my daughter that turned 10 this year or whatever, it was such a big deal. You know, you, you hit double digits, you know what wow, I mean? It's such yeah. a big deal. And everybody in my house was like, yeah, of course. And my wife was like, that's, that wasn't a big deal when I was a kid. And everybody was just like, cause you're weird, you know, <laughs> and that's, 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 <laughs> that's pretty much how it was. But, um, but yeah, that, 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 um, 10,000 hour rule, right? The, yes. Uh, the, the Gladwell. And, I know there have been, um, or he made it famous, right? I know there have been people who um, have, like Tim Ferriss, you know, uh, has since sort of tried to debunk that, you know, that there's shortcuts to learning. You don't have to spend the 10,000 hours and all that stuff, which may or may not be true. Yeah. But there's something about the examples that he gave in that book. For me, that was the big self-help book that was like, oh, okay, cool. I need to really focus. What is the name of the book? Uh, let me see. Malcolm Gladwell. I want to give you the right one. It might be tipping point. Um, that'll be great. I'll put it in the link. Yeah. Uh, let me uh, see. In the description. Cause he's, he's got quite a few, uh, good. Oh no, it might be outliers. It's either outliers or the tipping point, but they're both great books. Okay. Out- and, um, outliers by who? Uh, Malcolm Gladwell. Malcolm Gladwell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're Just great books, but like, 10,000 hour rule he made it really popular in um i think man i want to say it was tipping point but it, but the thing that that made him really the thing that made it really uh sort of resonate was the variety of examples you know mm-hmm. so like yes. uh you went through like bill gates and steve jobs right two totally different circumstances yes but when you actually look at the point where they became expert enough to start their business and trace backwards yes how did they gain access right and like uh steve jobs had access because you know he had access to computers because of certain circumstances bill gates i guess he had to like cheat a punch card system to have access to computer he figured out he figured out how to like make the punch card how to cheat it so that he could have unlimited access to the computer And he estimates from interviews, I spent this many hours a day for this many years doing this. And when you add it all up, it comes out to roughly 10,000 hours. And he started his business after that. Steve Jobs started his business after that. But then he does like chefs and entertainers and all these people that when you trace it back, roughly when you look at their own estimates, it's the same. And and, and that that 10,000 hours came out for a lot of people to be eight to 10 years, just like you're saying. hundred percent. Yeah. That's the interesting part. And you know what? Actually, when you know it, you can actually um, harvest it better. You know, you can plan better right now. I'm, I'm doing music, right? I don't want to be a musician two years from now. I'm doing this podcast. I don't want it to be the greatest podcast like two years from now. Right. I have a 10 year mark. I want every, like, I'm like, I spend three hours a day on each one, maybe three hours music, three hours this, and then I do the work to, to make money as well and enjoy like making games. But I know if I keep doing it for 10 years, then I, I can harvest the, the fruit of it, right? The, right. Thing, the, thing, the thing that I discovered is like the compound effect. There's a book called Compound Effect. And when you, when you understand how it works, it's actually everywhere in nature. The compound yes. effect is everywhere. Yes. It's, it's when you have a kid. It's when you work in a job. It's when you start a business. I actually... Uh, you know, I never did, um, you know, I, I didn't know about gardening or, or how to seed the grass, you know, clean up the, the, the soil and make new grass from nothing. I started that. I did it. I didn't know how to invest in the stock market. I started that and I'm like, I'm going to figure it out. And, you know, I noticed there is a, there is a pattern and it's the same pattern exactly in every, mm-hmm. all of this. Like I started teaching. It's the same pattern. Like at first I had one student, then it became five. Now it's like 15. Yeah. It's, it's growing, right? 
Yeah. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. No, 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 go, go, go. Yeah, and I feel like it's exactly the same pattern because when I look at the timing of it, I'm like, it's exactly like after like four weeks, you start seeing some some results and then it stays the same. And then after like six months, you will see a change, right? And then this these changes adds up and then it becomes like a compound effect and then grows mm-hmm. faster, faster, faster. When you get to the end, then you grow much faster. So your yeah. growth, like if, if we say like 10 years, the last two years, you'll grow maybe 10 times more than the first eight years. I, I didn't measure it. I'm just like saying a number, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but you feel it. You know, okay, now I'm learning how to design. Now I'm learning how to use my, the composition on the characters that I'm making. Mm-hmm. So it's a, it's a very interesting process. Like it's, it, it's everywhere. Your finances, yeah. your marriage, your kids. Yeah. So it, it's uh, Tim Ferriss, I think, calls it learning to learn. And exactly. It's, like, it's, it's trusting the sensation. Yeah. You've been through it enough times where you go, oh, I went, I took a left turn. I should have took a right turn. And you've been through that enough times where you go, oh, but I took a left turn. I should have took a right turn. It didn't kill me. And now I yes. took the right turn and then it's cool. And then once you have that confidence to do it and through any endeavor, that 10 years gives you that confidence. Yeah. And eventually you become savvy enough to go no left, right. And you don't have to take the left turn. And that's where your learning accelerates. Exactly. Because you, you learn to trust the sensation of, oh, I learned a thing. And you can, like you said, you can apply it to anything. You want to learn a language? You know what it's like to learn. Uh, right now, I'm in the very baby steps of learning Blender, right? I've learned other programs. So learning Blender is no big deal. Because, yeah, because I know that if I have all this other foundation information in my head, I just have to learn how to do that there. The foundation information is the hard stuff to get. Yeah, I have that already. It's just now what to click to get it. That's it. And it's way less daunting than... But you can go the other way, too. I've seen people that get really like uh, there were a lot of uh, sculptors uh, when I was first starting that didn't want to get into Maya. And mm-hmm. some of them evaporated. And then the ones that got into Maya later on, they didn't want to get into ZBrush. And some of them evaporated. Yeah. You know, and it's like that's the so you can go the other way, too, where all of a sudden you trick yourself into going. I'm so one with this process that now any other process, I'm going to immediately poo-poo it and deem it like not worthy or whatever. I see that all the time in our business, yeah. especially as I get older. And I'm just like, dude, I don't ever want to be that guy. You, you should know? be ready so, to change. You know, actually, one of the things that I say, like, look, I'm looking at Da Vinci, right? He was one of the best, maybe the best. Maybe no one is ever better than him, to be honest with you. Yeah. Everyone is analyzing his work. Is like he did this composition like this, like that, like that blah, blah, whatever he had his mind, in his mind. But I think it was the experience that he had. And also one of the things he did, he was good at designing. He was good at um, painting. He was good at uh, creating a stuff. Maybe a, I don't know about the sculpting. Did he know how to sculpt? I think he, oh, yeah. he knew, right? Yeah. So he was good at that. He was good at industrial design. He designed a tank at the time. He designed a diving suit at the time. Imagine like where his mind was. I think he designed helicopter as well. Yeah. So this guy actually tried everything, right? With the knowledge at the time. Um, I actually figured out, you know, as a person, I, when I started reading about Da Vinci, I was like, okay, maybe I should think about that and not only want to become a character artist, not only a sculpt in ZBrush. I should learn how to do, um, how to make my lawn. I should, I should learn how to, um, I don't know, maybe do woodwork. I should learn uh, maybe how to write a book. I mean, because I feel like as, as human beings, we have this, this amazing tool, which is our, which is our brain. We can solve problems. And as you said, when you learn how to learn, that is when you can actually grow and come up with new ideas, come up with your own unique voice, right? So, yeah. and I found this pattern, like I'm, I'm an artist, but I invest in the stock market. Part of it is because I want to make more money. Part of it is because I'm, I'm curious about numbers. I like numbers going up. What, I, don't, I don't care what it is, whatever. I have, if, if there's a number that I'm willing, dealing with, I want to find a way to increase that number, whether it's money, uh, followers, you know, years of experience, you know, number of r- books. So it's just weird, right? Yeah. But I feel like the more you do, the more you learn. Yeah. And, and the more you discover there is a uniqueness in, in the universe that actually is it's the same on every... There's a specific principle that it's everywhere, yeah. and regardless of what you do. But if you, if you understand everything like Da Vinci did, then you're going to gr- grow much, much bigger. Da Vinci yeah. actually has a saying, he says... As a well-spent day brings a happy sleep, a well-slept, um, a well-spent life brings a happy death. Yeah. 
So yeah. that's a stronger statement. And, and, and I know why he says that, because he, he wasn't just a painter. He was a mathematician. He was designer. He was everything. Yeah. And I think and it's super important. That's, uh, you know, so I put this up just now because everything you're saying is resonating with me so hard. <laughs> <laughs> because, um, you know, so uh, I I used to listen to the Joe Rogan podcast a lot, right? yes. like a lot, of, like a lot of people. And one of the things that he used to say a lot on that podcast is like a quote from Emperor Musashi. Mm-hmm. And it's uh, once you know the way you see it in all things. Oh, man, and that, that is so true. Like, that's exactly what you're saying. I think that like, you know, you learn how to learn. You know, you, you go through and it's like the the beginning, I think when you're in your thirties, forties, if you've sort of progressed to a certain point and you've yes. been exposed to people better than you and you're receptive to that and whatever, you can get to a point where you go, It's okay not to be the smartest guy in the room. Uh, it's actually and good it's to better. not be better. Yes. yes. It's better. <laughs> it's better because then you get to be a sponge from all these people. Yes. Right now, right now, um, the the project I'm working on at DreamWorks, right? Mm-hmm. There's a bunch of people working on this project with me. And um, I, I was thinking the other day, I don't know if it's because of COVID, right? I, I definitely have a greater zest for even the mundane things, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah. And I think part of it is subconsciously being aware, like, for the time being, I'm alive, I'm healthy. Yeah, my that's what your, your lizard brain is trying to... Yeah, you're appreciative in a way yeah. where, you know, oh, yes, you yes. know, it, it's like that's the recognizing that so many people can't say those things, yes. you know, and how fortunate you are or whatever. It's like that's a it's been very sort of in my mind. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if what I'm feeling is because of that, but I honestly don't think it is. I've been on a lot of projects throughout my career. This project that I'm on right now and the people I'm on it with, I'm looking around at like the work being done. Mm -hmm. Maybe it's because everybody's at home and everybody's focused and everybody's whatever. But man, people are really putting themselves into this project and the Mm -hmm. work in such a way that I think everybody is like, I've noticed it recently. We've all sort of like hit each other up. Man, this this is this is good, right? This is really good. Like like the whole project is really good. Like, yeah, it's, it's one it's of those. Maybe they're more focused. Maybe, maybe that's, maybe it's the result of that. Maybe it's the leadership because we have good leadership yeah. on, on the thing or whatever. But it's like, uh, the, the, for whatever reason, the whole thing is sort of coming together in a way that it's just like, man, this is actually, I'm getting up in the morning and I'm like already thinking about what I got to do that day uh-huh. because, because I'm having fun doing it and I'm enjoying myself and whatever. Yes. And maybe it's because I'm blocking out the rest of the world by focusing on that. So maybe that's some part of it. But I actually genuinely think whatever's happening is happening to everybody. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's actually helping the project, the product, the attitude, like everything is really good now. <laughs> you know yeah, what I mean? So it's great. actually yeah. good. And you know, <laughs> one of the things like we talked about, like the, the I just want to say something about the 10 year, 10,000 hours. When you pass that moment, you just become more effective and then you get rid of your insecurities. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, you know, yeah. and, and the more of those things you shed, the easier it is for you to recognize that you don't need them when you're starting a new exactly. thing. So you can have the humility starting a new thing going, it's okay that I don't know. And that's it. You yeah. Know? But, and, and certainly not to try to compare myself to somebody like Da Vinci or whatever. Yeah. But but people like him or Michelangelo or any any sort of classical, you know, um, artists. classical artists that went to the church, the way that we go to film studios, yes. or we go to, you know, anybody that went to the church for their patronage or whatever, yeah. they had to, oh, you need me to paint a fresco? Cool. Oh, you need me to do to sculpt something? Cool. Was it oh, Medici need- that helped the uh, the classical art at the time to grow? I think it was the guy was called I, Medici, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Yes. But, but but the thing is, right? The 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 thing is with that, there was a um, today you would call it like a generalist mentality, right? Yes. Where and what I've noticed in our industry, for good or bad, right? Like I think um, it's for bad. I know what you're trying to say. Yeah, there's some people that go, no, you have to be, I am a 3D artist or I am a this or I am a that. And it's like, I feel like those are lanes that are set up by the entertainment industry. Yeah. And you have to respect it because you have to have a a factory. Yeah, but you have to have a certain level of acumen to contribute 
in a certain yeah. way, right? Yeah. So it's like, to me, I used to, when I first started modeling, I was like, I want to be the best modeler in my group. And I was working with people who were like way better than me, but it was like, that's my goal, you know? And then over time, I realized like, wait, the modeling thing was only ever a thing because I didn't draw well enough to make it as someone who could contribute by drawing or designing something. Mm -hmm. Oh, at some point, a uh, switch went off and I'm like, I'm going to struggle with that for a while, you know? Yes. And I gave myself sort of a deadline. I was like, by the time I'm 40, I want to be contributing in visual development in some way, you know? Yes. Because I don't see 50 year old modelers everywhere I go, but I always see 50 year old concept artists. Yeah. And that's and one it, of the things actually, like we don't know, like this is a new yeah. business, new market, right? I mean, yeah. uh, I'm 35. I don't know if I can model characters when I'm 55. So right. Maybe it, that's one of the reasons I started like teaching now because maybe I can do something bigger. Maybe yeah. I can later open a business three years from now that can help others or yeah. I don't know, my own studio, whatever. Yeah, but it's like for me, that's the thing. It's like, okay, so I'm going to try this thing. I'm going to try getting back into 2D more, right? And yes. I recognize there are literally a million artists better than me at 2D and 3D or whatever. Yeah. But if I can be instead of trying to be that best, best guy, if I can be 80% of one of those guys and 80% of the other guy too, yes. now I'm, now all of a sudden I'm that person because that 80% and having a good attitude and having a good work track record yeah. and having connections in the industry, that's enough to go and say, oh, you need me to paint a fresco? That's a renaissance a man thing, right? Make a, that's, yeah, and it's like, that's more what I'm interested in than just doing a good model or just doing a good painting or a sketch or whatever. Yeah. So visual communication, the last few years has been the number one thing. Where does it make sense to do it? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. and, and apply yourself the right way. And I think it's, it's made me have more fun, I think, than I was having when I was only doing modeling, you know? Yeah, I agree hundred percent. I mean, the thing is like when you, when you, how do I say like that? I'm a curious person myself, right? And I, I feel like you're the same. You're, you have curiosity. Like it shows in your, in your portfolio and everything, and everything we, we talk about. So I think that's one of the things that helps you to grow as a person, as an artist. And you know what I say? Like I always say, like the story and the life experiences of an artist is what makes an artist a great artist. Mm -hmm. So if you if you get learn from your experiences, then you can implement them in, into your art. So. Like, for example, like I, I never did, um, you know, I didn't have the confidence to learn music. I started learning piano and that actually, that actually made me to feel like, okay, maybe I can do character design, better character yeah. design, more logical work. Yeah. So I did that and I was like, okay, maybe I can invest in the stock market. Maybe I can understand finances better. Maybe I can do gardening and enjoy my backyard when I sit in my backyard and clean up myself without relying on others, right? Yeah. It's basically like, um, I don't know, like I call it this way. Um, it's like... Um, I mean, it could be perceived as a bad thing or a negative thing, but I said like you can become like um, like someone who hunts, like a wolf or like a like an ancient humans who is like you know depending on himself, right? And if you're just modeling or doing one thing, then I don't know, like you're not really giving a chance to yourself to to see the other aspects in life. Yeah, and it's like you know if if you if you have an honest and it's tough, right? Because like, yes. if you have an honest sort of uh, evaluation of yourself and you go, no, you know what? I recognize like what you're saying, that I can go in these other avenues. But my passion is actually still this one lane. Yeah. Do that. Do that. But if you say, oh, my passion is this one lane because you're in a feedback loop of I'm successful doing this one thing. So I'm going to keep marching forward doing this one thing. And I've seen that happen to people. And then inevitably what happens, especially as you get older, you have a family, you have kids, you have whatever, you're marching down that path. And then all of a sudden here comes somebody that's 20 that doesn't have those things, just like we were when we were 20. And you go, yes. I, I can stay up till 4 a.m. and do this. And now all of a sudden they are zooming past you. If you stay that narrow, right, you're only running in that lane. Yeah. It becomes very easy for that person to pass you in that lane. But along the way, before they even start the race, if you start meandering a little bit and you learn how to navigate other lanes, yeah, then when that person is coming, it's welcome. Yes. You pass them the baton and you go, yeah, this is great, cool. And you pass it to them and now all of a sudden you can pick another lane, you know, and you can move in. 
instead of having, you know, I worked with someone who had a real existential crisis, you know, he got yes. fired from, from a gig because he got a little too slow and it just, it was a whole chain of life events that went crazy for the person yeah. after a while. And it was like, yeah, man. I mean, you know? um, the thing is, um, I feel like learning new things is actually very important. Yeah, that's why I'm, I'm trying to teach. That's why I started like making a podcast and one of the things, for example, like doing all of this actually made me to start learning how to market and sell my work or how to, you know, if I'm if I'm charging people for classes, I need to make sure that they they understand that I'm doing this not for money, but I want to make money on the side as well. Right. That's that's a marketing skill. So I'm trying to learn all, the, all these different things because I'm pushing myself. I'm putting myself under pressure, under a situation that I don't have to necessarily do it because I can just make money from modeling and enjoy it. And that's what I like. Yep. I like to sculpt. But, uh, you know, I feel like doing these, it's actually helping me to grow more as a person. Yeah. And, and one of the things actually artists are lacking these days is just they know how to model. They don't know how to market themselves. Yes. <laughs> so yeah. how yeah. do you expect to, to, mark, to learn how to market yourself without doing anything other than modeling you know or other yeah. than painting or whatever right and, and that's that's one of the things right i had a conversation with a friend of mine and he has a mentality that i think is very prevalent in our business but i also think it's wrong because i've been in situations where we're hiring right at every studio i've worked at i've been in situations where we're evaluating other people's work yeah to potentially come in and be a part of the team right Yes. And then eventually you're interviewing the person and seeing that the personality fits or whatever, but you start off with the work. And one of the things that every place I've been has been a great indicator is when you look and you see growth. Yeah. Growth is so underrated. So a friend of mine, you know, he looks at like my 2D work and goes, oh, you know, but it's not as good as this guy or that guy, or that guy. And I go, I agree. And he goes, oh, so you shouldn't put it out till you get to the point where you're as good as this guy, this guy, or this guy. And I'm like, I disagree because yeah. as long as the work is getting better, you know, and in particular, that's how I like to use um, uh, Instagram. Yeah. So like for me, that's that's Instagram is more of that. Art station is that a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. Art station, I'll prune more. I'll take things off more, you know. Mm. But like for me, Instagram is the place where you can experiment, do process stuff, whatever. But the the sort of chronological nature in which things are formatted. Yeah. If you can go back and see progression, that's, that's the thing that it, for me, when I look at other artists pages or when we're in the room looking at hiring, that's the thing that I see the most, mm -hmm. you know, you see other people are growing in a certain direction. You, you, especially if you're hiring for junior or mid, yeah it's like man yeah for sure if this person went from there to there in two months at, in in a month or a year or whatever and then you imagine what they're going to be like with the people we have here to talk to them and give them instruction whatever you know yes. as long as they're not a jerk this person goes now to the top of the pile growth is crazy That's underrated. important i think people actually are are kind of like scared because of the judgment of, of others you know sometimes our industry can be a bit dirty i would say <laughs> i think it's yes. everywhere but you know you put your work out there and you get judged and for me uh, i to get rid of it i actually uh at some point i was like i don't care what others think i know where i'm, I'm going to be 10 years from now right i'll send you my first youtube video bef uh, after this <laughs> uh, you will you will laugh at it but honestly yeah. i'm actually proud of it because i learned so much and that the start of that was everything that triggered this moment Right now, I'm and sitting and talking to you. That's the right attitude, I yes. think, though, too, right? Like, too, because that is a growth mindset. That's you going, yeah, here's how I'm going to grow. Yes. Uh, you know, and, and and you anticipate, you know what? Uh, I'm going to be ashamed of something in a little while. And that's okay. It is okay, you yes. Grew, you know, so it's like, yeah, if you, the, the, the mentality that you have to wait until it's perfect, like the yes. saying, don't let perfect be the enemy of good. Yes. Yes. You know, right. Right now, uh, I'm teaching online, and one of the the things that I'm trying to drill into people is, it's a ten week course. There's two five week projects. Mm -hmm. You you do the best you can in that five weeks, but you hit all of the marks. The model I've I I used to work with. There's one person that stands out more than anybody, but I've seen this happen with a few people, where it was the same every time. 
Mm -hmm. We would get together and we would bid our work and say, I think it's going to take this long. Or you get handed a schedule and say, it's going to be this long. And as we're getting towards the end of the schedule, the person's like, oh, I got to rebake this or, oh, I got to redo that or whatever. And that person would consistently always blow their schedule. Yes. And their work at the end was great. But being the perfectionist is not the right way. Right. Especially in a game environment where you don't yes. have to, it film. I have to deliver a thing and it has to be pretty much perfect because that asset's going to get rigged and animated and go down the line. And there's an offline rendering component and compositing yeah. component that needs to happen for the movie to come out. Yes. Games, games, you can go all the way until you lock. You want to change that dude's like shoulder pad or whatever. You totally can all the way up until yeah. the game, you know, so you can always do that. So I didn't understand this dude's mentality of I got to get it perfect. I got to get one in that's perfect. Yes. And keep blowing the schedule and it hurt him you know professionally it does but, yeah yeah and it's like no do the one you you giving me 10 days i'll do the best i can in 10 days if you give me 15 days i'll do the best i can in 15 days there's a certain point where it comes ridiculous where you give me 50 days okay i don't need 50 days like i'm there's not going to be a difference between day 25 and day 50 yeah. at that point, you know what i mean so it's yes. like you don't have to take that much but it's like do the best you can in the time you have and then try to make have you a know, result at the end. You can, yeah. The thing and is, that's not trying to drill into them. It's hard. Yeah, it is. And the thing is, like, what I um, realized is basically, um, you know, sometimes we judge ourselves more than others judge us. We are yeah. we are kind of like, um, how do I say, we are the hostage of our, our own judgment, right? Mm. And, and, and then you put the work out there. Nobody, no one is saying anything bad. Yeah. And, and they're, they're actually... F not many people in this industry would judge anyone. Like I have in my classes, someone is like posting his work. Actually, one of my students was like, I'm ashamed to share it. I'm like, you should never be ashamed. No one is going to judge you. And no one judged him, actually. He shared yeah. it. It was basic. He's just learning. And I'm like, you're taking the first step. 99% of the people don't do that. So you should be yeah. proud of yourself that you're taking this first step. Even, you know? even more than that, when you have the visual acuity, because... The worst part is when, uh, you know, early on in our careers, I think we're probably all victims to this, yes. where you, you do a thing and you're so happy that you just did a thing that you go, boom. And exactly. there's no recognition of like the humility of, oh, these are the aspects that are wrong with it. I'm still going to put it out, but these are the aspects that I think could be improved if I had more time yes. or I was willing to invest more time. But you just are happy to do a thing. So you just put it out. Yep. When you get to the point where you can develop your eye to go, oh, you know what? Here are all the aspects that I would change, but I've done the math in my head and I don't want to spend the time to change them, but I can see what's wrong. Yes. So if that person can already see what's wrong and can articulate it, that's a huge step. You it know is. what I mean? Yes. It's a huge step. It is. And actually, often when I, when I talk to, to, like people ask me for feedback, like students or friends, I'm like, um you're the best person that you give you can give feedback yourself so and i asked them i'm like where do you think this is wrong they say i think the lips are not right eyes are blah blah whatever like the neck can be longer i'm like so why don't you do do those things get rid of those and then show it to me or There's if if you see alexa is, alexa oh, <laughs> this is the second time it's doing this actually <laughs> hilarious <laughs> so yeah i'm like i always say like do it and then look at it again and then um, you don't have to be a perfectionist, but fix the things that you can fix, you know? Yeah. And then um, don't, ju don't judge yourself, you know? Don't be like af afraid of sharing and starting doing something and then push it basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, but that mentality goes to everything. So it's like yeah. even with, so uh, the, the project that they're doing in school right now, um, mm -hmm. the, first, the first project, I was trying to do something I've never done before and I'm doing the project with them, you know? Mm -hmm. so. Uh, the project I came up with was you're going to take a live action character, mm -hmm. character from a live action film, yep. and you're going to recreate a version of them in ZBrush that fits into an animated remake. So, oh. for for example, um, if you take uh, Furiosa from Mad Max, right? Do you uh, want to share anything on your screen while you're explaining it? I can. Nah, no, it's okay. not. Uh, ah, okay. But, but basically, basically, the, the you take Furiosa from Mad Max yes. and you say, "All right, what would she look like in the world of the Spider Verse?" Mm -hmm. And that's your deliverable, right? So it's yeah. like, but the first step is before you do anything in ZBrush, 
you have to break down what it is about that character that makes that character recognizable mm -hmm. in text, like draw over the character in Photoshop, write down all the things you think make that character that character, and then break down what you think makes that film look like that film. So if she's going into Wreck-It Ralph, she's going to look really different than if mm -hmm. she's going into Spider-Verse. Yes. So what is it that makes Spider-Verse look like Spider-Verse and Furiosa look like Furiosa? So like you have to figure out those two things, right? And yeah. it's like they have to do the breakdown first. And, um, you know, the number of people who are paralyzed just by making the choice of the two things. You haven't done anything yet, mm -hmm. but you have to make the choice. It's it's astounding. And it's like, no, no, no. Wow. You, you built it in your mind, this idea that you have to choose the perfect character and the perfect thing where people go, oh, you're clever just by the pick. Pick anything. Pick anything and then focus on the execution of that thing. And that's how you get to that five weeks, you'll be done. You know, actually, yeah. Marcin was t saying the same. I don't know if you watched that episode like before you. I not published yet. it yesterday. He was like, I'm at a point that I'm not trying to be picky. I'm just like, he he says exactly the same thing you were saying. And I came to that conclusion as well. Uh, it's like he says, um, just I'm, I'm trying to design and do a stuff in two hours, five hours, just to finish it, just to feed my brain with, with new information, you know, and, and go from there. And I'm trying to optimize my workflow to come up with faster ways for production or designing. And I, I, and I just want to like, he, he's like, I want to experiment. I don't care if it's perfect. And you know mm -hmm. what, what's interesting? Oftentimes you come up with better results when you do that. Yeah, you're more free. Yeah, it doesn't matter if you do it faster to me. I'm like, yeah, I mean, have a deadline, maybe one month, maybe it's two months, yeah. but don't ex extend it after that. I mean, one yeah. of the mistakes I did last year, I started the character and I haven't finished it yet. I mean, I'm busy with other stuff, but I'm now because, because I extended too much, I was perfectionist on that one. Um, now I'm looking at it, I'm like, I don't like this anymore, but I'm going to finish it because I want to yeah. just finish it, you know? The, the mech one? <laughs> uh, which, uh, no, there is like... I. The the mechanical one actually. Which one did you saw? Did you see? I saw I saw in a video of yours where you oh, were saying yes. you started one as a sketch and now you're gonna yeah. finish it. That one so I need to finish. Yeah. Yes, that one I need to finish. There is another one. It's like a big ogre, like a troll. Oh yeah, it's yeah. Like his face is twisted. So I yeah. didn't finish that, but I'm I'm trying to finish it now. I'm trying to. I, I'm not changing the hires anymore. I'm just trying to finish the lowers and texture it. Yeah. So, By the way, side note, I love your work too. And, <laughs> Thanks, man. And I, I do think, I do think, uh, Mihai said it. There was so much that he said in that video mm -hmm. that I was like, yeah, I feel like that. Yeah, I feel like that. And one of the things when he talked about your work was that even in the things that are not super stylized or pushed, right? So even yeah. in your marvelous work, right? Yeah. Everything is very clear and oh, everything cool. is bold. You know what I mean? So clear and bold. And it's like those two things. Because um, I, I struggle with that to try to have things that are clear mm -hmm. and bold. And I think clear, um, I, I have a suspicion that clear is clarity is one of those things that makes people think work is appealing. And I don't mean appeal like yes. like, di like Disney appeal or charm or whatever, but mm -hmm. I mean like, like appealing, like pleasant, pleasant to look yeah. at or whatever. Because clarity, you get a weird endorphin hit where you feel smart. You looked mm -hmm. at a thing and it was very clear and you understood it and you go, I understood that. And you yes. feel good about it. <laughs> yes. And it, that, that feeling is one of the things that contributes to, oh, that's appealing. That's cool because mm -hmm. you understand yes. it. And it's actually a narcissistic, weird. It is. Psychological thing. But yeah, I, and, and your work has tons of that. I think it's oh, that's Oh, that's really good. I mean, <laughs> you make me happy saying this coming from you. <laughs> I didn't expect this to be honest with you. <laughs> no, it's true. It's true. You know, and I, one of the things I realized, oh, I, I'll say something and then maybe, maybe we can go. Do you want to sculpt something after this? Like, um, we, can, sure. we can we can show something and then because I, I enjoyed like watching your art and I'm like, I see a lot of really good, good design, good, good lines and shapes. It's amazing. So I'm going to say this. I'm, I want to see what you think about it. Yeah. Um, the best works that I ever did was the ones that I didn't overthink it and also like came from my heart. Yeah. Like I had a story behind it. There was a reason I made it, right? And then, like for example, like if you look at my portfolio, there's a guy. Like, there's a beast that I made. That's like there's a lot of triangular shape. It's a. It's angry. He, he's like he has a tail. Um, and then back in 2012, I made a mafia guy with a hat that he's looking behind yep. the camera as if these two works actually are my favorite because uh, I made them for a reason. 
I remember that might be a guy. Yeah, so I didn't care what others think, actually. And that was surprising. When I did that, the guy from 2012 that I won so many awards for that got printed in several books. You know, and people see those who know me, they know me because of that. And then last year, January, I was like, maybe I should do something just as a sculpture. I want to have fun with it. I want it to come from my heart. I want to make a beast, but I don't want it to be pleasing for anyone. I just want to do it, do the feeling that I have in the moment, you know? Um, yep. And I want to put my feeling into, a, into an angry creature or to relieve myself, right? And then the result, at the end, I was like, okay, this is interesting. Like, um, I got it. I. Um, like I got the result that I wanted. Actually, thanks to Witali because he. I don't. Do you know Witali Bulgarov? I know. I don't know him, but of course I you know. Saw, his you saw his work, right? It's, it's one of yeah, the best of designers. Course. He's amazing. Like yes. really amazing. Yes, always. He, like and he's been that way for years. Yes, and he's yeah. one of those guys that you say like his work is appealing. When you look at it, it's appealing, right? He gave yeah. me like a few tips, really good tips for two hours we spoke, and then actually that that completely turned my. Um, mindset about design and shapes and everything yeah. and then combining that with what comes from your heart now actually i uh i feel like i'm discovering ways to to make better looking characters i'm not there yet i know it's a long way it's a never-ending process and you know i'm practicing my free time or when i when i sculpt in my classes i have a i feel like i don't i'm sure you experience this is like a like an x-ray vision you see through things without doing it and then you do it it looks correct you know what i mean yeah. like, Using yeah. like, diff, like really nice shapes, golden ratio. You know, you have a purpose for everything. There's a story behind it. Why this shape is here? Maybe there's a bump on this on the head of this character because he was hit or he had an accident when he was a kid or whatever. You know, all those kind of things. Yeah. So I'm not like really trying to do anything to impress studios or any other artist. I'm just like trying to learn and, and do something that, that I enjoy. And one of the things is um, I was like, I did a couple of portfolio reviews for the past like two, three weeks. Um, and then every time I ask people, they say, um, I want to do this because I want to work in this studio or I want to do this because I want to work. And I'm like, that's not a good goal. You know, you work in that the studio. Well, why don't you change the industry? Come up with your own taste, your own um, vision, you know, try to do something new that others didn't do. You know what I so mean? It's weird, right? So, like, I think for me, the older I get, and maybe this is some kind of surrender for me, right? But I, I used to think that, um, I used to think that, you know, the end goal of being original while still satisfying whatever it is people are looking for in the product mm -hmm. was, was the main thing. By the I, way, I, can, can I share your screen now? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. All right, I thought you were sharing already. Yeah. No, no, go ahead. The, the the idea of sort of being original um where it's like you know uh oh i've never seen this and i like it if you yeah. can do those two things that that was the most important thing and i think the older i get right yes. and, and part of this analogy is because i grew up in new york you know hmm. but it's like there's a pizza shop on every corner and you have an idea of which one is your favorite because the way that they it's sauce bread and cheese but the way that they do it at that place, mm -hmm. something, something about it hits your palate right. And I think yes. that originality is great as a goal. And if you have the ability to be like, um, you know, Alberto Mielgo or Miel, I don't know how you say his last name, but mm -hmm. the dude for who was the art director initially on Spider-Verse. Mm -hmm. And uh, he did Love, Deaf and Robots. Uh, he did The, the Witness and the... Uh, the watchdog trailer that's out now uh that uh, that's him so you can see sort of a visual through line in all of these things i remember seeing his demo reel years ago that he put online with mm. on vimeo and it is still to this day it's like you can put on that reel there was a time where the the character art team at my last job um at, at vicarious where we put that on and we sat there and uh we watched it back to back to back for about half an hour and we all just sat there and it's like, a you know, maybe eight or nine minutes, something like that. But so we watched it like three or four times and everyone was just like, wow, wow. Like, like, so, but I think the reason that that's so astounding is his level of creativity, you know, yeah. and, and, and his willingness to be as different as he is, is like amazing. I've never worked with him. I don't know what it's like to work with him. I don't know like anything about him, but I just know his creativity is off the charts. How so it's like, 
how do you think people get creative? Like, I, I don't want to stop you when you finish. Sorry, I thought you finished. No, no, no. I was just going to say, so like I look at him as like a special sort of weird unicorn almost. Mm. And for someone like me, I have to be honest, I don't have that. I don't have what he has, at least not yet, you know? Mm. So it's like for me, I fall back into sort of the sort of more rudimentary aspects of it, not storytelling or whatever, but like sort of a craftsmanship of shape and like arrangement of elements to yeah. try and create a fun design or whatever. That's what gets my juices going. Mm -hmm. And I just realized for me personally, I don't know if I'll ever get to that point where it's like originality for originality's sake is mm -hmm. going to be a big, a big deal for me. Um, it's, it's not, it's not my thing. I don't know. But you, ha you have your own style. Like when I look at your art, it's, I, I, um, I can say this about Marcin um, that I spoke to him. I can say this about Mihai. I can say this about um, um, Vitali Bulgarov, right? Uh, when I look at your work, um, I immediately recognize that this is your work. So even though we didn't speak before, right? This is the first time that you're talking. Um, yeah. And then, um, like, but I, I was following your work for a while, for, I don't know, for ages. I, I remember since I started, <laughs> you know. So, I mean... I can see that you have an originality in it. Maybe you don't know it. Oh, maybe. Maybe. I just, I look at people. So there's so many people that I look at that I go, you know, and I think to, if we're honest, a lot of us do this where you look and you go, man, why can't I be more like this guy? You know what yeah. I mean? And it's like, I have so much of that in me that it's like, that's the part that it's like. Argh. But you know why? Yeah. What, what I say, when it happens, I'm like, yeah, that guy's great. Amazing. You know, all these artists, they're, they're great. But maybe I should I should try to discover my own yeah. um, signature, right? Or my own style. And I think it will come. Like every artist, I mean, if you do it, I think at some point you will realize, okay, I have something in me that I can I can um, grow it bigger and make it more, I don't know, more visible. I don't know how to yeah. say it. Basically. Yeah, and and that's the that's the that's the thing. Lunch crunch taught me more than anything that it's yeah. okay to have that feeling, and it's okay to. Um, it's okay to recognize that, but then you got to get out of it real fast. Like what you're saying, you got to like have these other things in your mind that sort of let you know, like, yeah, that person is great, but it's okay to not be that, to be yes. a different version I of mean, a thing. I say it this way, for example, imagine like in classical music, it, it could be in anything. I'm just saying in classical music, if Chopin was trying to copy Beethoven, then there wouldn't be any Chopin. Right. Right. So yeah. I think uh, because of that, and one of the things I noticed is like, um, and unfortunately, there's a lot of bad advice out there. People are like, if you want to work in this studio, I, I call it bad advice. I might be wrong. I mean, some people want to work in the studios only, and that's their, their passion and their goal. But um, they say, okay, if you want to work in this studio, then copy what they do, make something similar, and don't, and don't go work there, which I think it's not going to help you to have your own voice. You know, yeah, it, it, it helps you open the door to that opportunity, potentially. Yes. Like I, I heard a story at one point that I always think about. And it's uh, I can't remember it was on a podcast or something, but somebody was talking about um, the they had a, a game that they were making where there were zombies in it. And in someone's portfolio, they had rotten meat and really good anatomy and like all the components that you would think of as typical like zombie sort of uh -huh. components right yes and they didn't make it past hr because they were told like we need people who can make zombies but oh. hr didn't have the acumen to go oh yeah these are the things that make zombies and it wasn't until that person got a job at that studio years later and they went yeah i applied here a long time ago and they were oh. like you would you would have been perfect you know so and it's like that's the kind of thing so like studios they they mess up all the time. They you know do, what I mean? Yeah. So it's like, you know, and, and I've found as I've gotten older, it's really just the people you work with. It's the people you work with, um, you know, even more than the project, even like, yeah, I, I was surprised to hear Mihai saying the kind of work that he's doing right now, you know? Mm, yes. And it's like, you know, the more I thought about it, the more once he started like, you know, yeah, but it's really just about the art. And I was like, Oh, there it is. That's, yeah. that's, yeah, it makes sense. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like, that's the part where for me, I was like, yeah, that makes, that makes total sense, you know? Yeah. And, uh, I, yeah. Was, I actually had the same reaction. Yeah. I had the same reaction. Sometimes you may not get, um, uh, I mean, I, I like the process of making games. 
because um, I'm, I'm kind of into technology, right? But I think when you repeat it too many times, at some point you might want to change, right? Yeah. So even though I like it, I'm trying to do other things like doing a podcast or um, playing piano. It's just good to have to have variation at what you do, right? I mean, we are not built yeah. to, to like going back. It's it's going back. I don't want to go back to that conversation again, but it's like yeah, yeah. the same thing, right? I mean, you want to enjoy life and yeah. try different things. So aiming for for a specific studio might actually be an empty goal eventually. Yeah, and I'm not uh, saying like you shouldn't because you know, um, I think I think the studio. I always say this: a studio should be um, one of the goals on your way because a job is a temporary. Yes. Um, working in a, in a studio is a temporary job. It's nothing more than that. Yeah. And the yeah. glory of it uh, washes away after you finish the project. Two years later, you don't care about it. It's disposable. Yeah, that, it is. That, that part of it is disposable. But also, at the same time, the, the, the right job should be uh, where you can appropriately apply yes. your skill set yes. just outside of what you think you're capable of doing. That's yes. the best like you have a, a vision in your mind of what you're capable of and they ask you to do just a little bit more and then you can still do it yeah that's the best that's the best job situation and i have found that sensation mm-hmm. at small studios at big studios at you know what i mean so it's yes. like that that part is irrelevant you know what i mean the the, yeah. the big studio idea no longer is something that's like oh my god this is important to me it's not that big of a deal. i think part of it is because of ego right when we we are young we we have ego we want to work on it have the biggest job i mean biggest studio biggest house whatever anything the, the bigger the better right we, we shine yeah. like, i work here you know i'm the <laughs> whatever the person yeah. is <laughs> there yeah. um but when you get to, get to it you will realize okay that's not um exactly what you're after yeah you know, if, if you're an artist the creative mind is actually looking after something else. Yeah. For me, that place was for a long time uh, Valve. Oh, wow. It was, it was Valve mm-hmm. and it was Pixar for a long, long time. That that place was that, you know, and it was like Valve games and Pixar games uh, or sorry, Pixar films at the mm-hmm. time were to me, it was like, oh, my God, that's, you know, where I want to be. And I realized over time, no, I want to be associated with the prestige of that place, but I really don't know enough. Yeah, especially, exactly. especially Valve. You know, I really don't know enough to make an educated guess exactly in, about what that's going to be like. You know, so but those are all things that just come with experience. When you're young, you just see the name and you go, "Oh yeah, that's what yeah." I'm and the name is doesn't mean anything. You know, they do great yeah. work. All of these companies, they do great work, right? I yeah. love watching um, Pixar's work or DreamWorks or yeah. Blue Sky movies and. Yeah, playing games from Not Dog Game or Sony Santa Monica, all those games—they're amazing, right? Yeah. But yeah, um, it could be different when you go there. And you know what's right. interesting? Um, for me, when I was 13 years old, I played PlayStation and I told my mom I want to work at Sony. They were joking at me. They were like, "No, that, that's a stupid. You should go to a school. Blah blah. You should become a banker." <laughs> okay. Right. So, um, but it's interesting. I achieved that goal. I worked at Sony as a lead character artist. I worked at Sucker Punch on Ghost of Tsushima. And that's past, nice. right? Yeah. And, I, and I, I honestly, like, I'm, I'm happy I worked there. It was a great experience. Like, the game is coming on in a couple of days and all that. Um, but that moment is gone. Now Now I'm working with people that I used to work in the past. It's a new company. I don't want to say the name because I don't know if they will li- like it or not. So I'm okay. going to keep it a secret. I'll tell you after. <laughs> okay. So, but I, I can tell you, um, it's the best job, I like, best people that I ever worked with. Yeah, best and environment everything. that I ever worked with, and I, and I mean, they didn't exist ten years ago. Yeah, that's that's everything, man. Yes. That's everything. Yeah, and it's like I think also too, that's not. I didn't always feel that way. I didn't always feel that like you know I could have enjoyment at a small studio the same way I could at a at a big studio, and that the projects were more important to me. The prestige of those projects was more important to me when I was younger. Mm-hmm. Uh, than than they are now so like thinking about like what mihai said when he first said you know that he was doing like casino style games or whatever i was like oh man but dude it's like it's like if you're superman and you're telling me oh yeah but i walk to work 
You know what I mean? Oh, and it's like, oh, yes. It's capable yes. of so much. Like, why would you, like, in my head, I'm doing all these uh, calculations. And then when he said, yeah, but it's really just, it's all about the art and we focus on the art. And, and you see, he's like, very happy, actually. I get it. I get it. Yeah, yes. totally. Once he said that, I was like, oh. That's it. There right? it is. Yeah. Yeah, there it is. And he is happy. You know, the, 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 unfortunately, there's a lot of like, um, I'm going to say like a, a lot of bragging, right? I mean, in the art community, yeah. when the artist is young, works in a bigger studio, I'm like, yeah, I work here. I'm the, you know, yeah. director on this project and I'm, I manage a team. I make good art, best game ever, whatever, right? And it's, it's kind of like hard because you're, you're putting yourself under a lot of pressure when you on that situation right you feel like obligated to do certain things to talk certain way you know it's always like i don't know how to explain it it's a feeling that um everyone experiences at some point but but when you when you just pass over that time it's very liberating you know what i'm trying to say it's hard to explain i do feeling it's a hard feeling you're not um you know so it's like it would be the same in other aspects of life right maybe in your 20s you feel pressure to drive a certain car or yes. have a certain kind of job or house or, you know, significant other or whatever. And it's like, you get older and you realize who you are more and you go, that's what I, I'm not really into the, any of that. Yeah. And, and now you sort of embrace the things that you like. And all of a sudden life's a little better. You it's know? better so it's and like, you grow more, actually. You become yeah. better at, at whatever you do. It's art or business or music. You make more money. Life becomes yeah. more interesting. You're happier. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, and that's a that's a normal sort of life growth pattern. I think yeah. that's, uh, you know, it, it it's it, there's a saying like uh, youth is wasted on the young. Yeah, you know, yes. and it's like that's the that's the thing to to have appreciation and vigor at the same time. I think mm-hmm. that's wisdom. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's yes. like that's that's when someone's really wise. And I've known a few people like that. Um, and I go, oh, yeah, like, this guy's way on it. Like, I wish I was that advanced when I was his age, you know? Yeah, I agree. So, but, you know, yeah. what's interesting, like, when I look at um, my life, like, I know I didn't do certain things between the age of 20 and, and 30. And, you know, everything you mentioned. And then now I'm like, okay, so how am I going to spend my life from now, right? Yeah. Uh, so I'm still young. I don't have the youth I had when I was 20, right? But now I, at least I have more wisdom comparing to five years ago, ten years ago. Yeah. And I'm based on that. I'm planning to, to basically work with a better, better mindset. So to, yeah. to, to at least what I can control is the future, right? I cannot yeah. control what happened to me like five years ago. Yeah. And 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 you know, I wish that there were things like I told you earlier. I relive things from my past that I think are always probably going to haunt me a little bit, mm-hmm. but. Um, the older I get, the more I still think about them, but I don't let it control me. There was a time when I would get, I would think about like mistakes or something from the past Mm -hmm. and it would actually affect my mood. You know what I mean? And I would go, which doesn't make sense because you can't change it. You, all you can do is sort of go, yeah, you know, I gotta, I gotta move on and not do the same mistake twice. That's the victory, right? Yes. Yeah. Cause it's like when I do the same mistake more than once, that, Sucks. that's yeah that's where like, yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like i don't know if it relates to that but it's like fool me once um yeah fool me twice whatever yeah. the code is yeah. <laughs> i don't remember yeah. exactly yeah fool me once shame on you shame on you fool me twice, twice shame, shame on, on me, me. <laughs> yeah 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 exactly so what did you do here you changed it like i did i i don't know what i'm doing i'm just <laughs> getting freely yeah i have no idea yeah i was like looking I, at it I, then you completely changed it yeah, he changed into a whole different guy. I have no idea. I'm I'm tired and loopy. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to like make something interesting or I don't know? Um, I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's go. I mean, it's All good. Right. It's good. You can continue on that. I'm no, like, I do something a little more serious, less goofy. Uh, let's see. So let's go. Um, talked about like really good stuff. Yeah, one thing um so yeah. One thing for sure I'm noticing like there's certain trends like just in case anybody that's just starting out is listening to this or whatever. Yeah. One of the things I'm noticing for sure um in 
it, like every class I've ever taught or whatever, where ZBrush is a thing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I think you don't realize, and, and you tell me what you think too, because I know you're mentoring yeah. people. You don't realize, I think in the beginning, the amount of care you have to put into like a uh, professional sort of work in yeah. terms of small things. So like uh, shapes, right? Like yes. uh, even, even like a tiny little eyelid, you know, or the way an ear connects to the head or something yes. like that. It's like, there's a specific sort of, you and know, your work is actually more visible. That's what I told you. Like when I, when I look at your shapes, they're so well thought. It's not just, I'm going to make an ear and, that's it. You know, I drop a oh, couple of brushes and that's it. But there's uh, wisdom in it. I can see it, you know. Thanks. Man. There's a, so um, I don't know if you're familiar with uh, Mike DeFeo. Um, I'm not sure. But let me actually write it. How, how do you spell the name? Yeah. Uh, uh, Mike, M-I-K-E, uh, DeFeo, D-E-F-E-O. Okay. And uh, he was the uh, modeling supervisor at, at Blue Sky for a long time. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be a, um, I wanted to be an animator in the beginning and I actually started out um, animating and rigging a little bit. And then modeling at the time, they were working on um, commercials and mm -hmm. shots for films before they started making movies. Mm -hmm. They were working on commercials and, and shots for a few films. So, and there were only three of them at the time. So they were slammed mm -hmm. and uh, they needed help. So me being sort of new guy, kind of not even a, I was a, officially still an assistant, but I saw that as an opportunity, like, Hey, you know what? I need to learn. And I think Mike saw, I like, I didn't have a computer at home and, um, uh, it was, I, I would come in every morning. I didn't even have a computer at work. Mm -hmm. My job was there to, my job was mostly to, do like tape backups and take stuff to FedEx and go to the bank and, you know, go get coffee and stuff like that. Yeah. So, uh, Mike noticed though, that I would come in, I would find out who was going to be out the next day and I would negotiate with them. Like, Hey, can you log out? Can you whatever? And I got one of the system administrators to make me an account. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I would negotiate with people to log out when they were going to be away. Mm -hmm. And then every day I would take the train in early mm -hmm. and I would take the last train out. So I was coming in at like six o'clock in the morning wow. and then, and then leaving at like 11 o'clock at night, every night. Okay. Um, and it was so, you know, I could do my job during the day, but I could also just take over someone's desk during the day too. And they just looked at me like a little young puppy and they were like, yeah, whatever kid. So you know, what cool. were you doing looking at their, their work, what they do and observe? No, I was practicing. I was oh, learning, practicing. Learning, learning Maya, learning soft homage at oh, the time. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I was like practicing. I would log in at, on my account and mm -hmm. then I would practice between like my other tasks. You That's know? amazing. And uh, that was the, so I think Mike saw that and then he saw that I sort of had an interest in modeling uh -huh. and then sort of started oh, wow. mentoring. And then you stopped animation. And I stopped the animation completely. But I think the animation actually helped you because when I look at your your art, the the, the poses, the uh, gesture you have, the motion that you have in it, I can I can see that animation is there. Oh, thanks, man. You know, you understand yeah. motion, which is great. I, ne I never did it to the point where I was like animating full characters and stuff. Mm -hmm. There were a couple of like shorts, mm -hmm. uh, where I did a little animation and things like that. Uh, we did. Um, we did shots for the movie Titan AE and uh, there was a shot at where there needed to be this like planet mm -hmm. that needed to be generated. And it was like a very small group. There were like a few of us and it was just like, oh, okay, cool. So I had to figure out how to make these chunks of a planet come together all by myself. And I was terrified. Wow. And I had never done anything like that. And I basically at that point was trying to pretend like I was one of the guys, but I wasn't, I didn't have any experience. And coming out of that, that was the first time I felt like, you know what? Holy shit, I can actually do this if I really try, you know? Wow. It's, sorry for cursing, but like, like you know, that was the, <laughs> like, yeah, I could really do this if I if I try. And I, I really learned, that was the first little bit of confidence. Did you uh, study anatomy? You did, of course, right? I wanna like, hear it from you. Bit. A little bit, mostly through Mike. 
so Mike was he was Superman. Like he basically um, he would uh, you know organize classes, and uh, he's a traditional sculptor. I think some of my ideas like hmm. definitely come from learning from him and some of the other guys that that worked there because uh, they were all uh, like sculptors in the city in new york uh that did like uh toy stuff mm -hmm. and, and um you know for them they would do the way we have now this dichotomy of like you're doing stylized work or you're doing realistic work or whatever they always try to drill in like you're doing the appropriate work because mm -hmm. for them they would do you know scooby-doo one week and the next week they were doing uh conan you know mm -hmm. and they yeah. had they had to know how to do all of it and like i still admire a lot of toy sculptors that are that way today mm -hmm. still you know yeah. like um do you know uh andy burkholz andy burkholz yeah he calls himself yes. monster papa uh, this is his stuff. i have a oh, tab up right now with his stuff but he uh um, yeah, i saw his work yes yeah his work forever has been amazing wow. and he's got like he's got one coming up that you might need to blur out i think Oh, I, really? I, won't, I, won't, I won't scroll down that far. But basically, when you look, he's doing like realistic uh, things, stylized mm -hmm. things, things that have anatomy in them. Yeah. You know, but but that thing that we were talking about before, the, the bold shapes and clarity, wow. it's always there. It's it the is, right yeah. shape. And it's bold and it's clear always, no matter yeah, what. Yeah, I, I saw his work. The, the, is that the pumpkin carving? The one on the top of this? He's, he's, yeah, yeah. yeah he's I, one I of, remember all of his works. Yeah, him and Ray Villafane. Uh, Ray Villafane is wow. another guy. I think they work together with a few other people to That's do amazing. The, the pumpkin things. Yeah. Do you know what this and guy he, is a person? Or you work with him? No, Just I've never met person. him, but I've just been a fan of his work forever. I'm going to see if I can speed past that one. Um, but like, you know, just how clear you know wow. all the shapes are and yeah, that's, uh, that's interesting like you know uh, one of the things i told my student um, i actually learned learn this kind of like past three four years it's like um having purposeful shapes and clean shapes as you say is more important than details like primary shapes secondary yeah. shapes focusing on that if you get that right then adding details is actually not that hard yeah. Uh, so especially like when you get into like, I always say the hardest things to sculpt or model or whatever are uh, ladies and babies. Yes. Because you can't hide like there's no part of you that can go, oh, you know what? Um, uh, you like use minimal a brushes or minimal shapes too. Yeah. Making a monster is easy, but uh, yes. it, by comparison, you know what I mean? Yes, like it's yes. got its own you know difficult thing and i think that's where um like i've seen a lot of people that sort of poo poo making stylized work or cartoon <laughs> yes. work or whatever yeah and it's like they, they assume because it doesn't have surface detail it's easy but i found through my career it's as hard as you know when i'm asked to do other kinds of, of work you know yeah uh, it's just a different kind of hard it's like a totally different thing so yeah it's um it's something it's, it's it is uh, art actually i mean it yeah. requires like like what you're doing now i mean it's just um i i see i'm observing like what you're doing and i feel like um your every brush that you use there is like there's a reason you know you're not just wow that's that's awesome what was how did you do that it's very clean which oh uh so um this is another thing Mike used to do. Uh, and he was someone that resisted. I like to tease him because he resisted ZBrush for a long time. And I was sitting with him the first time he said the words digital sculpting. And I looked uh -huh. at him and I was like, oh, and he was like, damn it. <laughs> you know, like, oh, I wasn't going to let it go. So I, I like build up the mass around the eyeball. Oh, and then, okay. and then you stand there, just push it right through. And then later on, if you're going to bake or whatever, you know, you maybe have to clean it up a little bit. But, uh, you know, damn standard, push it right through. And yes. then you just come back with uh, alt and sort of clean it up and it all. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, good for a wow, you, you're, I do it. I can see like your lines. <laughs> it's, it's very satisfying watching you work. Like Thanks. you get to the point without uh, kind of how do I say, like without struggling, basically. Obviously, a lot of many years of decades of experience, right? No, I mean, in, in my mind, it's always still a struggle. It's like, you know, because you only see the parts you want to change, you know? Yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, and that's the, 
what's the what's the eighty twenty rule or whatever where it's like eighty percent is like easy to get to, but then that last yeah the last twenty percent is forever. Not. Yes. Yeah, that's totally uh, that's my. That, that's nightmare. actually what I do. Like when I teach people, I'm like try to get rid of the boring part, which is like putting shapes together. Um, you know, basic. Uh, foundation of the not what when, when I say shape I mean like simple stuff put a sphere put a cylinder for the neck you know um, yeah like Geonacle does that way too I don't know if oh you remember, yeah right oh and, yeah he's he's yeah. like one of, one of my one favorites of the best. For sure. yeah yeah so get to that point and then spend like most of your, your time on that 10 20 percent of the last yeah part basically and it's funny because like some of the stuff like that I hear him say is a lot of the stuff that I would hear Mike say, but they say it in such different ways uh-huh. and they have different like shorthand for it. Right. You know, like mm. one of the things, um, one of the things. So uh, Mike is very like as a sculptor, when we worked together, he was very meticulous. Right. Like you look at his work and it's very like measured. And um, mm. then uh, we had Andrea Blazic come to work with us for a little while. And mm. I, I still work with Andrea on, pl- on projects to this day. Okay. Um, the last couple of years, it's been like someone contacts me to do a bit of freelance or something. And I go, yeah, sure. And they're like, yeah, we had Andrea do a concept sculpt. And now we need like a real like model, but it still needs sometimes a little bit to be figured out because Andrea is a little bit like really loose with his, mm. with his style, very gestural and like beautiful. And I had only learned from Mike and thought that was the proper way to do it. And I remember when Andrea came, he was like, you know, this dude, this little Italian dude, you know, Mm -hmm. and he's got like a thick Italian accent, you know, Mm -hmm. and I remember watching him and um, they used to have like a little sculpture area. And I remember watching him looking over at him sculpt and I'm working on something. And then, uh, you know, after the first day, I was like, man, I don't know. Does this guy know what he's doing? Like, it just looks like a mess. And what, what he was doing was just blobs of clay, not taking any time to like, like even now I'm a smoother, right? I'll do yes, a thing and they work cleaner. Clean like I see you're working very clean. Yeah. And uh, for him, he was very much just like, like, uh, you know, sort of how like Geo is, right? Where it's more like get the shape in there, yeah. get the highlight cross section in the right spot, you know? And Nehi then he does it that way too. Like, yeah. But then um, what I noticed with him was after the first day or two, he had the entire gesture down. And then you could clean it up after that while everyone else, the rest of us were still like measuring and plotting and planning and building up slowly. He was like, like done, done, you know, and it's like all the important information was there. And I was like, wow, not only does this guy really know what he's doing, but I could we all learned a lot from him for i think sure. it's good like uh, i think you did the same thing here right this is amazing by the way like i see it you're it's very satisfying watching your work to be honest <laughs> thanks man <laughs> i mean you when you started this head right now you just put a box and then you quickly carve the shapes like simple stuff you put pull the uh, chin out right and then you started adding the necessary parts the different body part, the face parts and yeah now actually i do the same when i sculpt i'm like let's get rid of the the boring parts which is like putting a lot of like stuff stuff basically together without any meaning but yeah. put them in the right place and then carve out the the face or the body yeah the the big thing for me that i've come to in the last few years that never really made sense to me before but it makes sense now the biggest thing like right now in my class the thing i'm telling my students the most powerful time is when i put the pen down um so oh. like for me you know, you do, I will constantly, I'll make a turntable movie, you know, uh-huh. and then like walk away. And sometimes what I'll do is I'll make one, the head, like I'll frame it, right? Mm-hmm. Or whatever body part or whatever, I'll frame it. And then I'll zoom way out. And then I'll make a movie. And then um, I will, uh, you know, walk away basically. Oh, and then uh, come or, back and check it out. Or make a, make a larger one too. Mm -hmm. But they go back to back, right? And then I'll walk away for a little while and I'll come back and I I will pick up just a notepad and write down all the things that I see. Oh, wow. That's amazing. And then keep the the Wacom pen down for a little bit. And then my um, my next moves are to make those changes, right? So like I see all those things and then my next moves are make those changes. And I find that that it's counterintuitive because you think like progress is this. 
Yes. But no, actually, not. like, like putting that down and then thinking about it, you know. So, like, if I was doing it with this guy, I would say, okay, well, I want to get the ear in there for sure. That'd be the biggest note. The next biggest note is, you know, once I get the ear in there, really look from above and get the zygomatic arch and sort of the ear hole correct. Mm -hmm. And then figure out if I really want this sort of truncated head or if I want to make it more like real proportion, like make the head a little longer or make the chin a little shorter or like figure out like sort of what I want to do. I'd give myself all of if I see a high point is mm -hmm. in the wrong spot or like right there, there's a little wobble. Yes. You know, there or the eyelid is not clean. So I would like write down every single one of those things and then go, OK, my goal for the next hour is fix these. Wow, that's and, interesting. And I time box myself like that. Like, so if you give me, if I have a task at work, right? And it's like, I know it's due in whatever, 20 days. Yes. It's, it's such an abstract, 20 days is such an abstract amount of time sometimes. It is. To, to give myself many time boxes. Okay, by the end of the week, I want to have this much done. By the end of the day, I want to have this much done. And I will give myself many schedules, you know? <laughs> yeah. And like my last job, Film is very uh, producer, like like the producers you, are very communicative. Uh -huh. And I, I found my experiences in games to be the opposite, yes, where opposite producers, the yeah, they they're not on your, they're not on your back, right? And it's like you, not that they are in film, but it's like there's just a different sort it's of. It's a different, it's different workflow, definitely. Yes, because yeah. I did one movie. I know exactly what you mean. Yeah, it, but both of both experiences, if I give myself those dates. And then I find if I communicate those dates out to other people that it's important to, mm -hmm. that that's helpful, that they see that as helpful, that you go, hey, look, I'm going to do this tomorrow and this the day after, whatever. Sometimes people are like, I don't care, just hit your deadlines, you know, whatever. Yeah. But most of the time, if you're communicating to, you know, someone who organizationally is your superior or to uh, a producer, usually it's appreciated. Yes. You know? Yeah. You know, so, and you but, know, one of the things you said, you said like you put the put the pen down, and then you just come back to it and look at it and try to take notes. Um, you know, actually, how I do it. One of the ways that I work, I don't know. I, I want to hear your thoughts on it. You have m way more experience than me as an artist and in this industry in general. Um, like when I sculpt a head, the first thing I fix, I actually, when I see something, I fix it immediately. So hmm. I'm like, I want to have one less problem. So I slowly carve out and get rid of all the problems and try to solve them one by one. And then I put the pen down and then come back and look at it with a fresh eye. So I don't know, what do you think about that? It For me, it just depends. Um, mm -hmm. So like there's sometimes, like right now I see problems in the head yes. that I, I don't want to fix because they're all such big proportional things. Uh -huh. I'm, I'm willing to let them sort of live for a bit because I don't have the ears in yet. So just now yes. I just do the eyes and start making the ears because if i fix all those things and then go to put the ears the way that the ears can look right yes. is more limited more limited now you know so like if i want this guy to look like he's a really big like menacing guy or whatever yes you know i would maybe take other features like the eyes or the ears and make them small you know I, yes and, that's actually how i do it like i mean for example like uh, i don't go into details basically yeah. but i try to fix the bigger forms and then when I'm like, okay, I have the ears, I have the eyes, I have the face structure, I have the lips and everything now, what do I want to do with this guy, you know? Yeah, get everything well represented first and mm -hmm. then start making like the next level of decision making down from there, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and, and I used to, so I think because I worked with all those guys who were sculptors, mm -hmm. when I saw that some of them were really hesitant to accept something like ZBrush, which to me was clearly... The best. like oh this is superior to the way we're doing things now and they didn't feel that way right and i think because of that i was very subconsciously or maybe even consciously anti-traditional workflow right yeah where in a sculpting sense you have to work big to small and yes. if you don't you're gonna have to redo a lot of work if you make yeah. a mistake or they were, there's a change that's needed or whatever so working big to small makes sense you 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 get the you know the front plane of the face correct then you start working on the eye socket and then yeah, when you're yeah. happy you place the ball and then you start adding lids or whatever mm. but it has to be those steps you can't just i figured with this because you can edit the computer's an editing machine so fast 
Yeah. It, I didn't have to. I, I'm like, I'm free of that. I don't have to do that. And the older I've gotten, the more I realize, no, there's actual real wisdom in working big to small, even still. You know, oh, it's wow. like, yes. Yeah. Because because it's no it's not about a limitation of the medium. It's a limitation of your mind. I can't see that the pores are going to be wrong on this thing later because of some change that I haven't made yet here. So mm -hmm. by making sure this stuff is more correct early, then I can go in and when I say, okay, I'm going to have pores or wrinkles coming off of this eyelid, mm -hmm. they're going to follow that eyelid shape, obviously, right? So I need to, at some point before I get down to the point where I'm making those decisions, I need to fix this part first because only then, you know, this is the road. The other stuff is the lines on the road. The road has yeah. to be there first. You know, so it's like that's the that's the way that that you know those dudes would always sort of drill it into us. And I used to think that it was ah, that's just old man play talk. <laughs> and it's like no, that's actually I now think that traditional I'm, is or maybe always I'm the winner. Old man now, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think traditional is always the the winner. To be honest with you, the more experience you get, and the, the more you understand, the bigger shapes are more important than you go from big to small. You know. Yeah. So that's actually how I try to work now. You're you're yeah. much better than me, I can tell you. Like, I mean, yeah. you're you're working stylized. It's different, but I can see like um, you're more comfortable with your brushes. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm the same. I don't know. It's hard. Like I, I always underestimate myself. <laughs> I, yeah, I was gonna say I look at the end result of your work, and there's a, there's a level of polish there that I'm like, man, I've done a couple of things. Um, like uh you know using marvelous and whatever and i'm looking at like the intention of like what you're ending up with and yeah. it's like it's that thing where you recognize like i bet you're working over those things a ton right yes, to get yes. to be right and it's like you recognize oh the computer can get you so far but there's an artistry here that goes beyond it is what the computer's giving you you know so especially yeah. with marvelous it's hard because it's um random right yeah so the way i do it is like i change a lot many times to increase the odds of getting a good shape yeah right? and then uh, i'm like i have something in mind I, I'm, I'm, I, I look at it i'm like how does it like i ask myself how do i want it to look right and i i visualize it and i try to make marvelous to represent something closer to what i wanted you know yeah. and then sometimes it becomes better sometimes it becomes worse but yeah and and it's like that's the that's the trick with all of this stuff right like yeah. that's the that's the thing with all of this to like figure out the things you can do yeah to to trick um wait what am i doing sorry i'm trying to talk and do this smart. at the same time and i'm not smart enough um no, you're, uh, you're trying to you're, you're trying smart. to figure out how to uh trick things to into doing what you want so like yes here, here's an example of that just because we did this in in class right yeah so like like everybody else you know i do the z remesh and then project sometimes Right, uh, yeah, it's, so you have like the Dynamesh one and everything's together, but it's a little mushy and you want to Z remesh or whatever. What I find is because Z remesher will, and I know you can do Z remesher guides and all this stuff, but because Z remesher respects the shape of the sculpt more, if you actually go through, even if it means you're like destroying the Z remesher copy of the sculpt. Uh -huh. and you put in more clear, oh, uh, okay get more loops in those spots okay. so like even even if you wanted a weird edge loop here just to be able to sculpt like a bulldog shape it doesn't matter because wow. you're going to reach out to manual later anyway and then now what you do is you can do whatever that the areas where it's kind of mushy you can make them less mushy and just give them more contrast and then when you do zero, zero it's remake, look more clean it should be a little bit Dude. or at least the wow. edges should be bunched there. And I find this to be faster than doing Z remesh or guides. And it then is. you still have the copy to project. You just so. answered one of my questions. Like in my class, one of my students, she had a, like really sharp um, definition between the muscles. Like it was cut, like muscles were separate. And then I was yeah. like, let's Z remesh, Z remesh this. And then I'm going to sculpt on top of it. I yeah. Z remesh it. And I was like, oh, this is weird. The, 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 I mean, this geometry can be rigged. And I don't didn't know why. I think what you said just answers that question is because she had sharp lines and yeah. then Zero Mission was trying to follow that guidelines, like the, yeah. the, the those shapes. And actually, I mean with minimal changes, I could probably just 
the edges were perfect on the arm, on the shoulder, on the chest. I was like, what the hell? This is <laughs> like, yeah. it's ready to go into the game. You know, you can just texture it and basically yeah, UV I, it, texture I've, it, bake it. I, I have wondered if you could take that idea to the point where you're sort of iterating and then trying it and then seeing what you get and undo and iterating and try it to see if you could get like a real game ready topology. Could but be, I've honestly. Never, I've, never, I've never taken it that far where I'm Maybe, like, my I'm, curiosity is not that great. That is interesting. I'm going to try it. I'm yeah. gonna try. I mean, you already like w with this one. I mean, obviously, I don't know. Like the the um, eyelids, I guess, didn't work on this. No, yeah, I would have to like undo and then go back and whatever. But here, I now have those loops in there, right? But yes. I just did a project all, and it got all of the, you know, as much of the detail, and then subdivide, project all, mm -hmm. subdivide, project all, and eventually you'll get, you know, all of whatever detail was there yeah. back, and then uh, there, now there I, some... I just discard yeah. that one. Yeah, there was actually, um, if you go to zero measure, there was an option that says, um, I don't remember exactly. I think it was um, creases or keep creases or something like that. Let's see. Maybe you can try with that. Yeah, yeah sure. let's try with that. Like, Let's see. I've never done this. This is going to be awesome. Well, if it works, that will be interesting. <laughs> Your fan has a rhythm. The silence brings it out. Nice. <laughs> oh, so, does it work? Um, a little bit. Let's see. No, the eyelid still needs to be yeah, a little bit sharper, it's but good. it's it's pretty good. It's doing a it's doing it's doing what I'm telling it to do here. Yeah, so like yeah. maybe if before we do that, we maybe like pinch a little bit. Sharpen it more. Yeah, or even here in the brow too, or in the like eyebrow area, if I wanted another Edge sort of edge there like the orbicularis muscle around the eyes yeah i find that's another thing too there was a time when especially for teaching uh -huh. if i knew we were going to be working on a certain body part uh -huh. i was re-drilling and re-memorizing you know the names of muscles yes. and bones and Oh, it inserts here and it attaches here. And I was doing all of those things. Mm -hmm. And I think nowadays I'm pretty much like, nope, it's this shape. And it like starts out small and it gets bigger here and then it gets smaller. And this is the cross section along the yes. way, you know, uh, you're on the next I, stage, basically. I mean, you no, no, I just I can't remember. <laughs> so uh, well, you remember the shape. That's what matters. Yeah, hopefully, yeah. you know, um, but um, but the and that's where that's where Mike was great because one of the things Mike would do is, you know, when we had a little bit of, and uh, Mike DeFeo, when we had a little bit mm -hmm. of downtime, so like we were waiting for something from art or we were at the beginning or end of a project. Mm -hmm. Oh, that did a, that did a better job. Yes. I think that did a better yeah. job. Yeah. So when we were at the beginning or the end of a project, you know, um, he would just have us take, you know, those plaster casts of the yeah. David's eye and nose and ear and whatever. Mm -hmm. We would just drill those you know, but in, in clay. So he would just have like, you know, a board sitting there with, you know, some Chavant or Sculpey or whatever. Mm -hmm. And he'd just be like, all right, cool. Let's just go ahead and bust out some, some eyes and ears or whatever. And we would all sit there after work and do that. And uh, it wasn't until I had done it for a while that I realized the real value of it. It's like, man, like now when I'm making decisions about an eye, I'm literally for a lot of stuff, it's, um, you know, if I look at the David's eye, it's giving me a lot of information yes. that I'm using repeatedly. You know what I mean? And it's like yeah. it's from from a good source, like the way that the fat pad is here and mm -hmm. sort of the fact that the you bone know, gets soft there. It's all the David. Yeah, I agree. And, you know, actually, one of the things I realized um, when you understand, um, real, m memorize the muscle names, at least for me, I'm trying that now. Uh, what I teach to my students and understanding why they are named like that. You understand the function of the muscle. It actually helps you to sculpt better. Yeah. And, and memorize the shapes better. So. Yeah. hundred uh, percent. I'll show you, I'll show you another thing um, I've been doing with them. Uh, let me open, I'll open another file. Um, this is really cool, man. So oh, thanks, dude. It's very thanks. satisfying to, I mean, yeah, very satisfying. To, to, did you save it? Nah. No. <laughs> no. Nah, hold on, I'll save it. Let's see. Save as. Uh, let's go desktop. 
Uh, I'll just save it right there for now. But uh, so like if you have a like a, I'm the class I'm drilling into them. There's mm -hmm. this like a method uh, I used to memorize and it's uh, it's arch angle relationship cross section and hierarchy. Uh -huh. And it's actually backwards in terms of importance. Hierarchy is the most important. So big shapes have to be correct before small shapes. Yes. And then cross section, because that's what makes it a sculpture more than anything else. Right. The, the way that something wraps around. Yes. Um, uh, you know, relationships are important to establish a likeness to whatever you're doing. Mm -hmm. And then angles are good for measuring. You know, to, yes. to make sure you have the, the likeness, or whatever. So I do, I, it's arch to remember it and then going backwards. Wow, this is amazing. You know, oh, thanks, man. Yeah. So it's like, this is um this is a project I did before. And so uh, cool. this this project, something I started doing on this when I was when I was teaching with this was um, I started, uh, it was the Booleans had just come out. Uh huh. Uh, I never for, use them, by the way. <laughs> oh, for cross section, they're great. So, like, uh, for example, with this, right? Um, if I insert that dude, and then uh, let's scale him up. Oh, so you do a cross -sec section to look at it? Yes, and then uh, so what I'll do wow. sometimes, mostly as a teaching tool, but like then if I make this, you know, like that, and then I go live boolean, wow. I can see. Okay, exactly I the see. And then you move it through. Oh man! Because it's live, and you can see that your cross section is what you want it to be. And if you want to make adjustments to the shape, you uh, you hit uh, polyframe, right? You could see it. And while it's boolean too, you can also hit the other shape, and it'll polyframe. polyframe. Sorry, what, what did you hit the polyframe? Sorry. Uh, uh, shift F, like oh, polyframe. Shift F, yes, yes, the, the frame. Yeah, on yeah. the on the, the uh, see the wireframe. The boolean shape right uh -huh. and it's it's cleaner like so right now you see all the artifacts or whatever it's cleaner if the boolean shape is dynameshed because uh -huh. then it's like more geometry really, really closed i think too yeah, so like right. uh you know so now it should be a little bit cleaner i think so that is interesting yeah so like now we can go and you can move the model too through the through the mesh and then you just the look at the uh, cross section to, to correct yeah. things and, and it's just so like yeah i'll see sort of oh that's not the exact shape that i want or whatever but like little things like the way that the musculature of the neck curves back you can see if it's the right shape yeah. you know they can do that and with I, the sculpture but they have to cut it with the wire and look at it and then put it back again it's a messy exactly yeah, exactly. But this is like a way, like, I always think the computer, you know, no matter what you're doing, you could type on a typewriter or you could write in a notepad or whatever. Uh -huh. But when you, when you write in the computer, you can edit. So cut, copy, paste is existent there, right? Like you can, yes. you can, do, you can't really do like the computer, just the editing uh, device, really, if yes. you think about it. Same thing in sculpture. You could make a better sculpture. That, when I draw, I feel better if it's on paper. When I sculpt, I feel better if it's with clay. But it takes so long because I have a linear path and I yeah. can't deviate. And here, I can it's all about efficiency, right? So it's better yeah. to use the technology. Yeah, here I can experiment. You know, like the ability, just the, the editing thing, to be able to come in here and be able to service a note if somebody says, hey, we want his nose to be a little more bulbous or just whatever test it to be quickly. Able, yeah, to do this, it's just editing, right? C copy paste, and then you you change it, and you can see the difference right away. Yeah. You know, and it's like and and also if you this is one more thing I like I can to just do. Compare. Yeah, but like uh, a lot of people, they do the snapshot to compare. Uh, if you turn off the visibility, and I know you probably know this already, but like if anybody's watching this starting, yeah. if you turn off the visibility of both subtools, then uh, you just do up arrow, down arrow. Yes, exactly. And you go between <laughs> the two and you can like, for me, in, in uh, like when you're working with any kind of art director or director or supervisor or whatever, the ability to do this always elicits a response. It's and they so, go, yeah. It's and they go, oh, you know, look, maybe not that much. Maybe half. It's always half. They, always you know how it is. Half. They always say half. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 50 percent of that. Yeah, it's cool. always their their opinion matters yes. over yours. It doesn't matter who you are. <laughs> yeah. I, my my opinion my opinion these days about work that they pay me to do is 
I, I only I get prickly if I feel like it doesn't go with the project. If I feel like you're making something, you're making a decision that doesn't exist anywhere else in the world. And if the intention is, no, this is a thing that's going to stand out and it's uh -huh. not supposed to be like anything else in the world. Totally. I get it. But if it's supposed to be like a thousand other things, you know, if it's a character and all the other characters have a certain arrangement of features yeah. and this one weird for no reason, just because you felt like making it weird that day, I don't say anything because it's not my job to say anything. But inside I go, you know, that's not right. You know, we're going to change that back. You know, yes, we're yes, going to change that back for sure. You know, but, but what can you do? Yeah. That and then to some, me. as we don't. You know? I mean, uh, it's interesting. Like the the job that I tell don't, uh, that I work with the uh, with the people that I work now, it's actually not like that. It's very interesting. First job, I don't feel that way. Nice. So it's very good, and I feel like everyone is experienced. They they had to deal with all of those situations in the past, and everyone is aware of um, how the reality, how things should be. Everyone is kind of humble. Yeah. You know, so it helps that's, with the. That's been the biggest thing, I think. Um, So when I first got to, uh, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how I left ArenaNet. Oh, um, so I'm gonna switch uh, from your ZBrush, or maybe you can show your portfolio while you while you. Oh yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, there, there, we had a we had an art director who, to this day, I respect with everything in my heart and soul. Right, mm. uh, his work is incredible. Nobody can say anything about this man or his work or whatever, and. Um, Uh, you know, for me, he's on a pedestal still where it's like, my God, mm -hmm. amazing. And one day uh, we were having a team meeting and we had our boss for the company. He would go around the guy who owned the company. Uh, he would go around or maybe not owned it, but like he was in charge of the studio. Yeah. Uh, but he would go around to different rooms and he would sit in a different room for a few weeks just to sit with everybody and like see what the culture was and like, you know, observe and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. So he, he was in the room one day, you know, but he has on headphones like this. And we were looking at somebody's piece. We would always do like sort of group critiques and get together and like, look at like the piece. And I was saying, because my animation background, one of the things that they always try to tell you is like, you want everything to feel like it's crafted by one hand, right? Yes. Like you shouldn't be able to tell that one artist made one thing and another artist made another thing. Yes. And when we were talking about it, um, I was saying that, like, I can notice certain tendencies in all of our work. My stuff looks like my stuff and a couple of other people like their stuff looks like their stuff. And I was asking those guys if they think that it's worth it to do a unification pass where we had one of the members of the team was like, I think we all knew Photoshop. Well, mm -hmm. he could really paint to a high level in Photoshop really quickly. So I suggested, I was like, you know, would it be worth it to have Jason go over and just do a quick half an hour call out of like, hey, here's a way to unify this group of creatures. Okay. And because um, we were all working on creatures at the time. And the boss heard that. And he was like, that's a good idea. And okay. then uh, he asked me about it. And I said, yeah, you know, I told him the whole thing. Like, you know, in my previous jobs, it's always been about crafting things to feel like they come from one hand i don't know that that's right for this situation mm -hmm. but I, it's a thing that i have valued in the past and i'm only asking the question is this something that we can do i don't know how that got communicated to the art director but the next day he was not happy with me oh, at wow. all and i was like oh my god like am i gonna get fired you know and i had never been fired and i was like super scared or whatever and that day just out of the book my friend who i worked with in new york he was at blue sky now for the whole time that i was at arena net and he oh. or he was at dreamworks now sorry and he called me and he goes yo we're looking are you i know you're happy up there would you think about coming down and i was like dude yes uh, I, won't, <laughs> i won't apply so wow, he put my that's name weird how through. universe works right yeah so he put my name through and then the supervisor for uh who wouldn't want to work with you <laughs> And was like, oh, dude, like, if you want to come, you know, the, like, we have a spot. And then, like, in a couple of days, I had the thing. So that would have maybe been the case no matter what. But it, the way it worked or whatever, it, it became this whole thing where it was like, it looked like I was leaving only out of fear of getting fired. And that was part of it for sure. Mm -hmm. But, you know, in talking to the art director afterwards, it was like, no, dude, that, that was not going to happen. Like, you, you're you know, you're fine. And I was like, I know, 
but you were upset. I, I promise, I promise <laughs> this other thing popped up and it has nothing to do with this. I promise that that's real, you know? So I don't know if you ever believed me or not, but I was like, oh man, you know, but, uh, but yeah, I think, I think we're fine now, but man, that guy, his work is phenomenal. I'll tell you who he is after. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but, that'll be great. But yeah, his, his work is phenomenal. You know, yeah. I, I know like sometimes when you feel something, there is something, you know? I mean, this yeah, guy you're yeah. saying, obviously, he sounds like a good guy, sounds like a nice guy, but yeah. sometimes, you know, every every human being, the, the ego could be offended. Yeah, and I think the way it got communicated to him, like, hmm. hearing, hearing things afterwards was like, somehow like, you know, oh, well, the art director's job is to unify and blah, 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 blah. And that's not ever anything that I said in that situation. Even the people that were there in that situation having the discussion would all, I think, tell you that's not the spirit in which I said any of that stuff. Mm. Nor would I ever try to talk over this person because, again, like I said, in the pantheon of art gods, he's there. You know, this so it's like that's the, yeah, I, I would never, I would never. So yeah, that's not a, that's not a thing. I, I definitely will tell you about my shortcomings, but that's not, that's not <laughs> one of them. I didn't, do, I didn't do that one, you know, but, um, but yeah, so like my portfolio, you'll notice it's a hodgepodge, but it's the hodgepodge great. represents all work that I want to do. I have a lot more stuff that's not in here. Yeah, obviously, like that everyone I, else. <laughs> that I've done, yeah, that I've done, but I didn't have fun doing it. So these are all the things that I actually had fun doing. But I try uh, to break it up. I so like that like, Cyclops, or what is it? Oh, thanks. Which one? <laughs> the, the bottom, both of them, actually. <laughs> so this one is... It's very cool, man. Thanks. It's a weird little... I like playing with the idea oh, of like... Oh, uh, so good. So good, thanks, really. Dude. Thanks, man. Big shapes, but then a little bit of detail inside. This is the thing, like you're, you're doing a stylized. I'm not a fan of stylized work, but when I look at your work, I'm really enjoying it. Thank you, man. You know what I mean? That, that's like, that's how you you influence people, you know? <laughs> Thank you. I <laughs> this appreciate is amazing. it. This is amazing. Thank you. Wow. Thanks, dude. Uh, this was uh, January. We did a demo wow. uh, for... Your shapes, actually, your shapes actually remind me of kind of like similar to Gio Neckbill. He's he's another dude that's like yeah. in my in my head. I'm like that dude is like way he's way up good. here. He's like he's, he's amazing. But I try to mix it up. I try to do 2D and 3D. Yeah, and I love that. What is that? This is an alligator or dragon. Uh, just some weird <laughs> little like uh, oh man samur samurai good. dragon thing. Sorry, that has it's sound. Is it but 3D? it's like no oh, it's 2d it's, wow it's 2D, yeah but it's um it's like it's just i like to play with um the, you know again like i said my goal is to eventually get to the point where if you need me to contribute doing 3d i'm happy to do it if you need me to contribute doing 2d i'm happy to do it wow. and to try to do both to yeah. a level wow, that's acceptable your texturing is also like you you have a very good understanding of color and uh, contrast uh, it's it's very appealing when i look at it thanks man something else i stole from geo and those guys um him and uh a couple of other guys i don't know if you've played with any of the vr art programs uh not yet i need to get i actually had a vr but i didn't use it now i'm thinking uh, to get oculus just because of the medium yeah yeah so some of these are medium some of them are zbrush or whatever but they made a whole gallery show like samuel poirier and geo and all these guys they uh -huh. made this amazing like art that's gallery like, wow all their stuff so i was like you know what i'm gonna take a bunch of old sculpts and make my because you get like a little oculus this is home. yours this is your version yeah. wow yeah yeah that other people can visit so this is like i just took a bunch of old this sculpts from so over the cool, years man. and just made like little statues and you can like place things you know so it's like i've placed a bunch of old 2d and a bunch of old 3d <laughs> this is fantastic wow made a, made a weird little art gallery <laughs> that you can walk around in so i haven't been in here in a while um you have to you have to lock your home so that other people can't mess with things i didn't know that at first huh. so what happened before was I came in one time and the whole place was vandalized. Like there was <laughs> stuff all over the place. And I was like, what the hell? So I had to like reset it up and oh, then lock wow. it. You know, but I mean, some but, yeah. of those works were great, but you don't have it here. I don't know. Like, 
Oh, wait, let's look at that. Is that a samurai? So, what is that var warrior with the, the guy with the sword? The blue sword Ooh. in the middle? Oh, the, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, from oh, this Zebra. Is very cool. Wow. It's from Zebra Summit uh, years ago. The the first uh, Zebra Summit. Um, wow, your style is very appealing. I'm, I'm just enjoying watching this, to be honest with th you. Thanks, man. Yeah, this was a lot of like, uh, you know, just sort of. Um, so some of this, it started in a class. And mm -hmm. then uh, from the class, uh, this is what we made in the class. And then Zebra Summit was coming up. And I felt super honored. They were like, hey, do you want to like do stuff? And I was like, yeah, sure. So I just took this and uh, finished it at Zebra Summit. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then I try to mix it up. Like I try to have some anatomical things, some cartoony things. It's again that mentality of the right shape. You make the hearts, right hard surface as well. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> It's like the like I don't care what the subject is. Uh, this is much. how you said you're improving your game skill, right? I mean, these are yeah, all in the end. Trying. So like this this one um, was actually from a movie. It was a background car oh. in a garage from a movie. But afterwards, I was like, I have the asset. All I got to do is relay out the UVs because you know for a film, all like the door, yes, yeah, separate the, UV. The side, yeah, everything's going to be different. You them whatever, but like. You know, with this, it was like, oh, I could just take it and like lay it out into just a sheet or two. And, you know, the topology is not too heavy. And yeah, then it's, yeah. you know, because it was for the background and it was fine. This you know, cool. thanks, man. Yeah. So it's like there's a lot of um, sort of experimentation with different different things. And then like, you know, just studies wow, and stuff. Thanks, man studies and experimentation and whatever, you know, but, um, I would say for me, um, there's a lot of people I look up to in terms of their design acumen mm -hmm. and I'm not there, you know, but it's like, like, so I don't know anything about photo bashing, but I wanted to learn. Uh -huh. So I, I did a bunch of explorations of like, okay, well, and some of this was, uh, you know, the studio I was at, we started to work on destiny. Uh -huh. So some of this was like in preparation of working for Destiny because I would look up their artists and I see that a lot of them do a mix of photo bash and paint over and whatever. So I was like, all right, I'm going to start doing studies of that. So I did like a hundred of these. I did like one a day for, you know, almost four months. This is the, you know? the, the thing that I'm saying, like uh, experimenting, answering your yeah. questions, being curious, right? Yeah. And when they told me I was going to work on weapons... Um, you know, it was like, oh man, I don't know anything about guns. And thankfully my, uh, you know, supervisor at the time, my lead, he is someone that is like a gun nut and he used to build guns, uh, oh. years ago. Mm -hmm. So he just brought this big bag to my desk so and he said, here's all, here's all the parts that it's legal for me to bring to you in New York. And then it was like, all right, so grab a whole bunch of different guns that don't even go together and just photo bash them together make a gun and and then draw over them to make the gun or whatever different type and, of ar-15 <laughs> yeah and then in the end um the kinds of guns we ended up making wow. it was actually a bunch of like medical parts uh -huh. you know so a bunch of the the main inspiration for a lot of these were a bunch of like uh small medical devices And those were the ones that we ended up photo bashing or whatever. But I was glad we took the experience to photo bash. That's amazing. To do that oh, you did it first. for Destiny? Yeah. What? Yeah. Yeah. That's and interesting. Then, uh, here's another one from Destiny I just posted. I didn't know that you worked on Destiny. That is interesting. So even though your style is like more, you're more into a stylized. I mean, this yeah. is kind of stylized, but it's different than what you do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I think that's the, so like there's some stuff I haven't been able to put out you know, mm. that I would, I would like to be able to put out that shows like that, like a wider variety of like uh -huh. creeping into realism more or whatever, or, or things that feel tangible at least. Yes. Um, and in the next year or two, I'll be able to put some of that stuff out, but it, you know how it is like, yes, you're working and half that stuff never comes out. So it's like, that's yeah. the, that's the, the crazy part. So yeah, Amazing. for me, I just try to mix it up and try to, I'm trying to get to a level where, both sides are good you know yeah, to yeah. be able because i really do like both you know mm -hmm. uh, and this is a movie that never came out normally you don't get to show anything for the movies that never 
come out, this but they ended up showing all this stuff at a panel for SIGGRAPH oh, one year. And cool. so it was already out there in the public, you know, and yeah. then one of the, one of the um, artists who worked on other assets, like sort of pushed it. So some of these designs are from uh, Spanish designer, Carlos Granjel, mm-hmm. um, who is phenomenal. Like I, I learned so <laughs> much. That's cool. <laughs> I learned so much from that dude and, and another guy, Devin Crane, both of them together, just they were very cool with like sort of handing out their knowledge and sort of their choices and decision making, why they mm-hmm. chose certain shapes or whatever. And then they trusted wow. me and a few other people to like try to get those shapes to work. And then we would contribute and say, oh, dude, what if we did this? Amazing. You know, thanks. Yeah. So it was pretty, pretty fun times. This uh, this was this is all like in Maya, like just proof of concept for uh, a world that's like a ghost world or coming up with ideas for like the way things might materialize or be constructed or whatever. So it's like, it's all like fun, like design wise, this was all like the, f- some of the most fun design stuff I've ever done. Really? The project, yeah. the project was tough because of personalities, I think, <laughs> but that is, that's going to happen sometimes. That's, yeah. That's some places. Yeah amazing yeah yeah so this is great just thanks just a bunch of fun stuff so i I, these days as i'm getting older i'm just trying to have fun and not put pressure on myself like i see that there are some people i i fully accept i probably will never be uh the level of sculptor that like someone like geo or anthropus or one of these guys is you can be you don't want to be i think you are actually if you ask me Uh, like, thank, thank you. But yeah, like those dudes, uh, they do stuff that I'm like, I look and I just scratch my head and go, man, I don't know well, how to do that. I mean, you picked a different niche kind of, right? I mean, yeah, I'm trying to not pick a niche. I'm trying to like, I think about it like this, like, uh, it's a weird analogy, but like, um, if you're standing at the top of a hill and there's like a little channel, you yes. pour water and it's only going to go in that channel. And I'm trying to take my brain and put it in a few different channels, uh-huh. you know, because yeah. the industry is what tells me to be in one channel. Yes. And, and that feels, that. yeah, that feels wrong to me because I've seen people phase out of the industry when yeah. they only hold on to that one channel too tight. Yes. So I, I don't, I don't want to be like that. I want to, it's right color, right shape, right value. It, like what's appropriate for what you're doing. So like Andy Burkholz that we looked at, mm-hmm. like that, like that, how he can I, do a lot of things. I want to do that. I think you can. I mean, you just need to try it, to be honest with you. Yeah. You have to, yeah. you have to, you understand art, like in a very good, like really, like in a deep level. So uh, I think, you know, you don't need to, need to think about time. basics anymore. Yeah. You just need to try it, get out of your comfort zone. Right. And yeah. Then, and then get there. I, yeah. I, I'm pretty sure like it's going to take you like really fast, really fast. Yeah. Maybe yeah. one day. I think um, so. I've thankfully in my career, I've been working about 23 years and I haven't been uh, laid off yet. But I know it's coming because it mm. comes for everybody. No, it's not coming. Eh, maybe, mm. uh, you know, so, you know, so I'm telling you this because I was talking to Mike Nash. I don't know. Do you know him? Mike Nash, he does a lot of, I, I know his work. Yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So we were talking, um, he said he, we were actually talking to ourselves, um, um, like in a call private, he said, uh, I said something negative. He said, don't say that because that limits mm-hmm. you, that limits your mindset and you will never get there. But in reality, I, I, actually, I remember I told him like, I, I don't think I can design like you. Because I'm doing anatomy and creatures and different type of characters, he said. Because you understand that, I think you can design. It's just like you need to get out of that mindset. Yeah, he told me he's he's a very good designer, right? He's on a higher high level on mechanical um, robotic designs, right? Industrial product, whatever. So, and I'm like coming from him. I was like, okay, so now I want to tell you that, like you, you're telling yeah, me, like you you think you will never reach to the level of. Geo Nackbill or, or um, Chris Costa, I guess that right? You said Chris Costa. Yeah, 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 for sure. He's, I, I yeah, think you are there. It's just like you are in a it's, different niche. Yeah, I, I think I think like you know I look at their level of understanding about life, like in particular, because like uh, when I see a lot of the stuff that Chris does, yes. it's so admirable in that it's lifelike. Yes, yes. But but it is. There's there's people who can achieve a life like likeness, but it still feels 
not alive. And you can appreciate all of the technical acumen yes. that it takes to get there. But there's some stuff that he does that it's like, man, it feels so alive. I yeah. want to do one of his fly on the wall things. Um, oh, you want to do it? Oh, 100%. Yeah, because it's like, uh, I don't know if you saw the recent one that he did, the albino lady. with the, he, I think he called it the queen. The, <sighs> let me actually check it. Is it and, on his art station? Uh, I think it's probably on his art station. Maybe you can share it. I don't know. Do you yeah, want let me see. I'll look. Uh, he's very good. He's he's definitely yeah. one of the like. I think he's the best on that. Like, I'm, yeah, he's he's the best on that. Like, yeah, there's, when I see there's, his stuff. I'm like, this is insane. That are just like, yeah. So let me see. Uh, where is it? Yeah, this one. Oh yeah, and I mean, that's, I mean that's they're it. all, all of it. They're all uh -huh. they're all phenomenal. Right? Yeah, even all even the, the the fairy uh, Japanese or Asian lady on the left. Yeah, yeah. there's like a photo, man. Yeah, and, and, but but. But a photo of a person who's alive, like like yes. they finished, they finished snapping this shot, and then this lady, somebody touched up her makeup, and then she asked for a diet coke. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, like there. that's it's real. There. That's yeah. real. That's a real. Person. Honestly, he made a he made a black guy, and I thought it's a photo first. One time I saw it, I'm like, yeah. no, this, yeah, that one, and I was like, yeah. it's a photo, and I was like, no, it's not photo, it's his work. Yeah, but I've been a fan of his for so long. Like yeah. I was on, I was on the beta for one of the Z brushes with him, and um, he might have that work here. I don't know if he's like Look pruned it or not. But uh, he's got he. So he did a piece that was, and this is after. I remember when he first first started, like when he first got to the states, he was doing a bunch of Maya work. He did like a plumber. In Maya, that was yes. already phenomenal. It was like it was stylized. It was already very phenomenal for for the stuff he was doing. But there was a there was a piece that he did years ago, where um, it was an old man holding a baby. The baby is oh, dead. Oh, I know, I know. And the water is flowing uphill the wrong way. And I remember this one. Yeah. I remember sitting in my apartment at that time in the city, and my wife was laying in bed. And I sat there looking at this thing over and over, like all the images that were coming through on the beta forum. Yeah. And I sat there like, should I quit? Do you know what I mean? Like, should yeah. I quit? Like, like I'm never going to do anything like this. Like, should I quit? And I look at this now relative to what he can do today. Yes, it's different. And it's totally like he's even gone like 10 levels up, you know? And yes. so people like him and Geo and, and guys like that, I think, it's wonderful to see those dudes because they give you something to dedication, hope for. man, dedication yeah, really. to hope for one day. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, that's, that's huge. It is, you know? So yeah, those, those guys. And I, I think everybody I admire when I boil it down, even if like, like he's got a really complex set of shapes here. Yes. But clarity, I know what part is the eyelid. I know what part is the lips. I know what part is the cheek. I know what part is the horns. And Part even when they bleed, like, it, it's clear. Yeah, yeah, some of it is also like, I mean, natural. Maybe he doesn't have any rules. Like, if you talk to him, probably it's just, it just comes. Like, he's doing it because he did it yeah. so many times, right? Yeah, for sure. So, or or, or Grissetti, you know? Yeah, he's very good too. Grassetti. Yeah, he, he's insane, you know? Yeah. And and uh, I just bought one of, his, um, one of his classes and was like sort of looking it over the last couple of days. And, um, you know... A very good teacher too. Like I've seen him do stuff at like the Zebra Summit and stuff, but he communicates super clearly too. Which it's, course it's, did you get? Um, I have it here. Uh, from basics to advanced three D sketching. Oh, okay, that's cool. Yeah, he's and very so fast with it too. Like he oh, goes yeah, to the time. results really quick. Yeah, and he he says you know he he says straight up like i'm only this fast because of the number of hours i put yeah. into dedicating i don't have to think about an ear i just make it ear. i don't have to think about it you know and it's like i want to get to to that point to be at that level yeah. not to not to do the kind of work necessarily but to get to that decision making you know what's you know what interesting I mean? you're saying it but when you work i see you already have it i mean you really like when you were sculpting now you you quickly were getting into results that it was very satisfying to watch and you know, I think I think part of the reason that you're gonna grow much bigger than you are right now, and you say you didn't, you don't think so, is is you're humble. Like you're you're, I mean, you're 45. You're still young. You're thirsty for knowledge. You know what I mean? 
So, I mean, you might actually, I'm like looking at you, I'm like, okay, this guy is, is going to, I mean, you're already one of the best, so you're going to surpass yeah. what you are. The, the thing, the thing that that uh, the thing that's most, uh, you know, I ask my wife all the time, you know, like if if we hit the lottery, right? Would you still work? Yeah. Right? And she really loves her job. She would absolutely still work. Yeah. You know, and um, she goes, you know, it might not be working exactly at this place or whatever, but like they have a lot of options as nurses. They can do like like field nurses where they go to different hospitals, or whatever. She's like, I might do something like that so we could live in different places or whatever, yeah. but I would still want to do my profession, you know? Yeah. And I feel lucky to feel like that where if, if you gave me $20 million, I'm never going to work at a studio again, but I'm for sure going to make my own art. A hundred percent. I agree. I agree. hundred percent. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But, but, uh, but the art part, the studio, you know, you're providing a service that helps you finance your life and do all this other stuff. And if you can have fun while you do it, then you you can't ask for more than yeah, that. I think, I you know, so yeah. I and I've been very, very lucky, very, very lucky in my my career to have that 99% of the time. You know. Yeah, I mean, you're a good yeah. person too. You're you have a good heart. I can see that you're humble, so you get. I mean, with that mindset, you will get. You always there's a there's more chance that you will get good in life. So I hope so, man. <laughs> knock, knock on wood. I, I want to so. do it for you here as well. <laughs> I hope so. Thank you, man. Sure, oh, dude. Man. We did like three hours. That's like insane. Like this was like that's, really enjoyable. Like I couldn't crazy. even. Yeah, wait, I it didn't even think about. It. Yeah, very good conversation. I learned a lot. To be honest with you, yeah, like, me too, dude. <laughs> Me too. That's amazing. Do you want to, are, are you down? Like, I, I know you have kids, life and everything busy and everything. So I don't want to put pressure on you, but do you think sometimes we can do live and talk and help people that way? Or you think that's something like we have to discuss? Yeah, that would be great. Like I said, for me, I'm, I'm struggling with the community aspect of it. You know what I mean? Cause it's like, yeah. even at work, it's a bunch of people who are like, like I am, they have kids and stuff, whatever. And you know, like, you know, the end of the day comes, and everybody sort of scatters and does whatever to have one sort of dedicated, like, Ooh, that's going to be my nerd night, you know, and you <laughs> hang out with the nerd. Yes. That, yeah, that's good. You need that every once in a while, you know? So I'm going to do this actually. Um, I'm, I'm trying to come up, you know, this is like the, I think your episode will be the 10th episode. I'm going to release it uh, on Tuesday. So I think I'm going to, uh, I'm actually thinking seriously to open the launch crunch Facebook. I'm going to call it launch sure. crunch uh, point pusher legacy. <laughs> don't, don't, don't have, whatever, whatever you do, don't put my name in there, please. You'll probably get people like fuck that guy, like you know, no, he shut no, down the original one. No, there's no you know? way. There's no way. I was, I was so surprised with that. I it was, and it wasn't even hurtful. I was like, it's gonna happen no matter what. But I was just laughing, like man, this is the part where it's a weird compliment because it's like. They love it. Yes. Because you wouldn't be that 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 angry about it if it was just like something you were just like, ah, eh, whatever. You know? The, but, but the fact that people were like so passionate and I had a couple of people like let me buy it from you. And I'm like, I don't even know what that means because I don't own anything. And it's like I can't sell it. When yeah, I when I when passion, I kill it, it baby. Yeah, when I kill it to like like remove my legal like whatever, go do whatever else you want with it. Like it's not for me to do anything with it like i'm not making money off of it it's not a business it's mm. not whatever and i don't have that either i don't have that business part in me where people go you know I, I should i have kids i should try to make more money for them or whatever but it's like i've seen it happen like everybody goes oh you know what we should make our own outs outsourcing studio or whatever right yes you start and then all of a sudden you go oh we're making this much money even if you get to the point where you're making money, not just breaking even or losing or whatever, yeah. you start making money and then you go, okay, cool. Now what's the next step? Ah, we got to take on bigger jobs to make more money because we want to grow the business. Yeah. Well, that means you got to get more people in and eventually your job will evaporate from someone that was interested in making art and you took the reins to be independent in your art making and that's why you started your own business. And now you're managing the happiness of a bunch of other people I agree. so that so that they can make you more and more money. And it's like every time one of my friends has 
had that conversation with me, you know, oh, if we each take X amount of money and put it in, we can make a studio and we can do whatever. I give them that same explanation and I watch the light die in their eyes a little bit. And they're like, wait, you mean I don't get to it? No, you don't. And all right, I don't want to do it. I'm actually that. trying to find a balance <laughs> to do that. So, I mean, I'm trying to think of businesses that could actually yeah. balance between art and business, but it's hard. I know, like when you get into business, it's different. Yeah, it's very hard. Yeah, it's it's you know. But I don't know. Like I know you say you don't want to manage it. We can talk about that more in detail. But I really feel like if we bring the community back, it's gonna it's gonna work again. So maybe it would be, it maybe would be that cool. will motivate you to actually push it further. This yeah, time. it would be cool. I did it for years for free. You know what I mean? So like, yes. and I did it because it was enjoyable. And by the time I was ready to let it go, it actually wasn't that enjoyable anymore. Mostly because of the way Facebook moderation works. It wasn't about the people or anything. Uh -huh. um, you know, but that that part was less enjoyable. That, so and maybe, maybe can, that that part got better. I don't know. Maybe we can do like I don't know. We can talk about different ways after I stop this recording or another day. Yeah, maybe we could do it like through live youtube videos or discord yeah. or there are yeah. other ways yeah the, there's tons of new avenues now that didn't exist yeah. at that time yeah. yeah for sure just keep it open like yeah because i feel like we can bring it back together i can help you i'm right. super interested this is this is the second <laughs> this is the second good conversation like this that i have had one was just a conversation this not like a, a podcast like this but this is the second good conversation where uh, you talk to someone of a like mind and a like sort of set of experience and similar interests or whatever in like a week, week and a half period. Mm -hmm. It's kind of beautiful. It's like, you know, I'm, I might be crazy, but I'm not crazy alone. No, you know what I mean? <laughs> you're, you're, like, it's great, we, are, you we know? are crazy. It's a good, good type of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you for having me on here, man. I Thank appreciate it. It's, it was very good, man. Like I really enjoyed it. So I really appreciate it. Um, um, I don't know. Like, I, I think um, if we can finish it here. Let's plan. Let's, uh, I'm going to let you like rest because it's already late there. I think it's like yeah, 12 yeah. midnight. So yeah. enjoy your family time. And then uh, I'll message you again tomorrow. And we can talk about yeah. ways that we can bring something together, maybe like do Absolutely. live. Because I'm actually, um, I'm going to say it here now, I'm, I'm going to do um, live podcasts as well with, um, I think, you know, James Bosby, 1024, yeah. uh, a scanning company. So we want to do a weekly thing. And then I spoke to Mike Nash as well, and he's down to do it. Mihai is down. So uh, I think we could make a community to all of us together to do something good and have fun and then it could grow and maybe at some point it could be a business as well you never know that would it be comes fantastic from <laughs> yeah that would be fantastic so, just to be in the presence of those dudes and like hear what they have to yeah. say about design and art and everything it's going to be you, a nice conversation i think yeah for sure 100 percent, 100 percent. so yeah, man. that's that's it i mean thank you so much uh i'm gonna Dude, say thanks. danny or point pusher which one you prefer <laughs> Whatever, <laughs> whatever, whatever you prefer. Just call me Danny because I feel like after this we're friends. So. Uh, yes, we are definitely friends. I'm, 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 I'm kind of happy that we, we are friends now. Yes. And I didn't have the pleasure before, unfortunately, unfortunately, but it's never late. So I feel I'm exactly gonna, the same way, my friend. Yeah, be ready for my messages from now on. Yes, yes, I will for sure. <laughs> All, yes. right. All right. All right, man. man. I don't want to make you stay longer. You're you're falling asleep almost. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. Cool. Cool. Thank all right, you so man. much. I'll, I'll, right. We'll talk to you tomorrow then. Yes. Cheers, man. Thank you so much. Later, man. See you. See you. Bye bye.